Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Hooks. I'm your sexy ranch man, co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be answering a ton of listener questions. It's episode 410. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, the back some more. Let's attack Jimmy. Wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks sealed, sealed singles, sealed singles and sealed products, singles and sealed products. Yeah. Yeah. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, where I and Simeon just got our Disney Plus, finally up for pre order. Bought, uh, I just got my case, two cases, got my two cases of Disney Plus. Very excited. Uh, to unbox this set, use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, 5% off your order. 5% may not seem like a lot. Once you put in the fact that it's like $500 for yeah. two cases, <laughs> it does take off quite a bit, which yeah. is nice. It probably so, at least covers like tax. And then, of course, yeah. it's free shipping over 100 so you're free definitely getting free shipping. I, I genuinely curious how much money they lose shipping out cases because – that's like I'm a huge too. box. It's got to be like forty dollars, something right? like that. Something. I don't know. You said episode four ten, yeah. and that made me realize something, Calder. But last episode was four oh nine, and we missed a chance to to do some sort of like giddy up four oh nine. Oh uh, yeah. I don't even. I don't even like that song or that jingle, uh, whatever it is. But yeah, you're right. I mm. yeah didn't even think about it. Uh, four ten. What is that? It's like a. Shotgun, shotgun gauge yeah yeah shotgun 410 yeah, yeah. me me it's nerf or nothing that's what it's i always nerf say or it's nothing bucko episode 410 so we're talking about ages and stuff yeah we're recording the podcast so <laughs> all right hey hey simeon uh what made you happy this week my man what made me happy this week is i've got a big pile of stuff that's like slowly getting too old to sell you look like a big pile of something that's too old to sell. <laughs> I definitely, got him. definitely sorry, go sorry, continue. I couldn't pass date. that up. Uh, no, but I, I've been slowly uh, getting through some of like my old stuff, selling some of my old stuff. Um, recently posted up on some Facebook groups, like my ID cards, which I missed the boat on selling them the first time around when like WizKids mm -hmm. wiped them all out. But luckily. They're not worth nothing anymore because of silver. Um, some of them are still worth nothing. Like, uh, let's see. They made a DC card for, is it Man Thing? No, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. DC one. Yeah, there's a Dang. Swamp Thing DC card. Never had a Swamp there's, Thing. There's like, still no legal yeah, Swamp Thing. The newest oh, one no. was from, I want to say, like, or the, Light? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was like a super ah, from like Warlight. Damn. So he's, not only is he not silver, but there was never a modern one while his ID card was out. You'll never yeah. be able to play Triathlon. Probably never be able to play Justice. Uh, did Jocasta get one? I don't know. There's a bunch of characters where the set is too old, and so you'll yeah. just never be able to play the character. We're gonna have them. Yeah. I will say, um, I guess quick shout out to Mini News this week, right? Because you have to have oh, the same right. exact name that's on the ID card for the same exact name on the figure. Shield level seven and level one are not usable. Yeah, they're also not letting you do uh, the alternative names that are on the back of the card. Yeah, so since there's so no alt to name. Match, yeah, has to match yeah. the ID card, which... So another so now one, I actually um, have a useless shield level seven ID card with that errata. It's really the rough. All new Wolverine ID card, I believe. Oh no! Can't even she call in X twenty three, so she'll no. only be called in figure. under a Wolverine ID card, which is funny because it's got yeah. Logan's face. But yeah, Logan's face. I'd have James' face on it. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's only ever been one all new Wolverine. So you can't call it an X-23s. Sometimes she gets yeah. the uh, the Wolverine 
title though. Or yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. Okay. Hey, right on, dude. Uh, I'm glad you got all that moved. I hear you're giving out some great deals <laughs> that you told me before the show. I was like, man, I can't believe what a, what a steal those guys handed out. Um, what made me happy this week? Uh, what made me happy this week was finally pre-ordering all my Disney Plus on CoolStuffing.com. That's not me being a corporate shill. That's just true. I have been refreshing uh, like every day for the past like two weeks, waiting to be able to pre-order it. I can finally pre-order it. Pre-ordered my cases. I'm excited. I also... Uh, woke up in the middle of the night, uh, Cool Stuff Inc. code in hand, and bought $100 worth of Marvel Champions card game stuff. Now, I didn't think I had it had it down bad. Uh, I guess I do. So <laughs> I am now addicted to two games. I bought the Mad Titan nice. Shadow, which is Thanos. I bought the Rise of the Red Skull expansion. And then I bought the War Machine Hero Pack, and then the Venom Flash Thompson Hero Pack as well. Uh and then I had to add in lunge, the the feet lunge for nineteen cents to push me over to a uh, hundred dollars for cards. free shipping. Yeah, no. What year is this? Plain no. Well, cards. here's the thing. I just like I needed something really t- small and cheap to push me over to a uh, hundred dollars on it. So I was like, ah, shoot, uh, I need that free shipping. So it was literally <laughs> I true. really needed like fifteen cents. I'm like, all right, lunge feet card is nineteen cents. I'll overpay four cents for that free shipping. It's yeah. worth it. I've been yeah. every time I get close, I've been adding just a couple like golden age figures that I like the sculpt on. It does Good. two things. It's one, it's a figure that I already wanted. So it gets me in the door, gets me that figure before a potential legacy card that comes out. Mm. And then another thing is if for whatever reason they happen to make a legacy card for like one of these figures it also like gives me that potential boost too um but i've been yeah adding those slowly so there's like there's a couple that are in there um currently i have the uh ultron prime from the age of ultron movie and uh the wolverine 019 from x-men days of future past that's the one next to the in front of the wall with all the wanted posters oh I yeah. never got that one, so those are the two that are currently in my... That is... Sorry, go ahead. No, it's just... It's like my push-me-over-the-hundred-dollar mark, like, little saved folder on cool stuff. My, like, you wish know, list. I think that's my all-time favorite sculpt for any Wolverine they've made. It's like, good. that's just literally the comic cover, and I, I love that. It's also I love it so much. a really solid Wolverine. I've never played it, it but I've played against it, and it's yeah. actually... I don't know if it holds up today, but man, is it hard to deal with. He's got like some bonuses when he gets like based by people and stuff. Like he's got some cool stuff going on in his dial. Like I like it. I like him a lot. Yeah, definitely. Um, another uh, kind of off topic, but on topic news thing as we're talking about cool stuff. Um, I did get an email this week saying that my pre order. For wave two, which I've still been like holding on this all this time, um, yeah. they were refunding me my pre order because the distributor has canceled the like the orders. So wave two officially not shipping out. Yeah, uh, if the distributor level is canceling orders, um, like cool, cool stuff has also taken a down all of like the the pre orders. Um, yeah, I think. I checked another <sighs> website. I can't remember. I think I was checking a couple other websites to see if anyone else still had the pre-orders, and it looks like it was a like sweeping movement or whatever. You know, they it wasn't like a one-time whatever. Multiple shops have taken down right. the WWE to yeah. pre-orders. So, yes, as of now, completely dead in the water. There was a small glimmer of hope that I was holding on to, but um, yeah. That is sad. That is just a takes the wind out of you. Like I had already it canceled is. my pre order, honestly. Um as soon as they made the the thing that they were gonna rotate wave one. I mean that they were gonna rotate whatever, Warrior and Cena, and I was like, Yeah, this is it. It's just it's just over, man. And it's it's rough, like so many good I mean I could in angle, New Day, Hulk Hogan, dude, Ricky the Steamboat, ah, oh. Dude, yeah, uh, I think the worst part for me is that WizKids probably because they they already had like Warrior and Cena 
to like the point in production where they were already sculpted and dialed yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so what probably makes me the saddest is that there's zero doubt in my mind that wave two definitely had figures like sculpted and dialed and stuff. Like we, there was probably WizKids was probably at the point where it was ready to ship. It was ready to sell, uh, whether they had product or not. I don't know because that was also like just a weird time in the world. So who knows if they actually had product shipped, but there is potential that, you know, some Alliance warehouse out there is about to dump pallets of wave two. That'll never see the light of day into like a dumpster. Ah. Dang, yeah. All right, Dial H Road Trip. Let's find it. Let's find that Wave 2 dumpster. Hey, if it's on the way to Indiana, we should definitely make a pit stop and uh, start sifting through some trash for sure. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Show up to PJ's <sighs> event with uh, Wave yeah. 2. Hey, great segue. You know, speaking of Indiana, uh, next week, the 23rd of April is going to be the Kilted Classic, which Simi and I are both going to be attending it's like a little 300 modern. Uh, it's in Kokomo, Indiana. I forget all the details. Uh, but we are also sponsoring some cool uh, some cool prizes that you can win at the events. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how you can win them. I'm just... Yeah. I'm not even going to give you any hints, but it's not going to be like a first, second, third type thing. It's going to be a, uh, like a fellowship-ish type prize. Uh, not really a voting, but it's kind of like a... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just it's a little different. It's not about winning or losing. It's just about <laughs> whatever. So we're gonna give. I will it, say. Uh, um, yeah, I'll say what my prize is. Uh, I don't. I'll know. say what my prize is too. Okay. Just to yeah. Yeah, your prize doesn't. I guess your prize doesn't have anything to do with how to win it. Um, yeah. So there's actually a lot of content creators that are giving out prizes similar. Uh, something that kind of encapsulates whatever they do on their like whether it's podcast or uh, yeah. like. Jeremiah Peterson, I think, is donating a clicks tray, like stuff like that. Um, and PJ is letting the content creators pick the prizing and also how the prizing is like handed out. So I can't actually remember what my prize goes to, but I will say <laughs> uh, my prize is the same as one of the auction items for our charity event that we did. And right. so if you've watched any of the Sculpt Swap stuff, that is that's what the prize is. It's going to be you pick a sculpt that you want to see, and then you'll work with me and we'll find a dial that fits what you think the character is. So the last person to win um, during the charity event uh, is Chance McCall, and he picked good old Boba Fett from uh, the, what is it, Disney Plus series, I think is where he was created. Um, he is a Star Wars aside character in the Star Wars universe uh, on the Disney Plus thing. Um, didn't exist before that which is really cool that they they invented a new character just for disney plus but i'm gonna use one of the star wars legion miniatures uh paint it up and put it on a dial and it'll be featured on our youtube channel and then i'll send it out to him as well so that'll be the prize that i'm doing and then um nice. yeah so uh prize i'm gonna do is a pitch meeting of the winner's choice so you get to choose basically if you seem familiar with the pitch meeting series it is uh basically an employee is pitching a hero click set to the boss and it goes over all the ups downs and community reaction uh to said set in that pitch meeting um so you get to choose what set i do the next pitch meeting based off of don't waste it um, I'm gonna just spoiler alert. I'm gonna do Disney Plus. So yeah, like, don't say obviously the most, the most recent one. Don't, sure. don't just say the next set that's coming out. Um, Although if and, they pick yeah. X of Swords and you come in like Zoro from uh, One Piece with like a sword oh, in your geez. mouth and like a sword yeah. in each hand, each hand, yeah, yeah. Um, More time. So um, yeah, the pitch meeting yeah. history goes what House of X. Uh, Wonder it's pretty. Woman it's 80th. pretty short history. Yeah, House of X, Wonder Woman, 80th. Empire and then Rise and Fall. We did a little skip okay. on, sorry, not Rise and Fall, uh, War of the Realms. We skipped Rise and Fall. Um, yeah. Garbage trash set. Two X sets. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah his, or House of X was a good set because the distribution was wonky. It was right after the price increase. Um, yep. Just a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff to hate about that one. And then, of course, with Wonder Woman, there was a huge rules shift. So, if you rules haven't watched those already, all that, yeah. Yeah, they still hold up even if you don't know 
all the things that they're referencing because they're pretty self-referential. I'll say if I won just out of spite, I think I would pick the first Yu-Gi-Oh set to make you do a pick. Yu-Gi-Oh set? Oh just so gosh. that you have to like read up on it and like figure out. I would out. have to do a lot of digging. Yeah. Try to make a pitch meeting on the first Yu-Gi-Oh guys. set. Yeah, dude. Oh. <laughs> Which Calder actually owns, I believe. I do disc. own a, a dual disc. <laughs> I heard so. I was listening to another podcast that mentioned how it'd be fun to play tarot cards with a dual disc, and I was like, "Well, Calder, Calder's a bit of a hipster because he had one before it was cool." So he did. I did have a dual disc before it was cool. I actually played uh, my Still Bandit cool. Keith for, theme team. For the no, it was it was never cool. It's never going to be cool. But I played my Bandit Keith theme team, and I had my dual disc on my arm with my cards in it. Um, yeah, there's three or four Yu Gi Oh figures. And all of Hero Clicks that are Bandit Keith. You don't know who Bandit Keith is. I don't know. I might I've never uh, watched link Yu-Gi-Oh. a video. You never watched Yu Gi Oh no. or Yu Gi Oh abridged at the very least. Yeah, I do realize yeah. they they have like the the trainer. Very patriotic, name, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He's a trainer's name, duelist's name. Sure. <laughs> the Pokemon what a... Master's name. <laughs> I guess you're a filthy, a filthy casual Pokemon <laughs> Master. You offend me, Bruce. Um, uh... But yeah, no. Nah, so, long story short. Uh, if you know me, I think you can probably guess what I want you to do for like my like win my prize, but uh, you don't have to specifically try to shoot for it because I I will find a way to give it to someone. Um, maybe maybe I'll make it the first person that uh, quits in the tournament and then plays battle royales for the rest of the day. I've done that before. <laughs> maybe that's that should be the prize. Maybe whoever loses the most battle royales that day gets it because that's also something I've done before. Yeah. Um, if you know me, then um, you'll know that my prize is not going to go to the the person that no one at the venue likes, the the least liked person there. So, really? um, yeah. sadly, you know, the you'd think it'd be easy and you'd be able to easily get it, but no, it'll be harder oh. than that. I I don't remember what I, think, I picked, probably. but I picked something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh but all right yeah that's send me a nice prizes for pj's event and yeah. you know we're gonna be there uh come on down uh yeah we're gonna be hanging out i'm gonna get there matt reed friday. i think friday he's gonna try and make it there yeah matt reed's gonna try to make it there uh so that'll be fun patreon member 25 dollars patreon tier member shout out matt reed chad um, fixall is gonna be judging. chad fixall is gonna be there so, he's gonna be judging It'll be a fun there's event a, there's a not a better judge in here oh wait no, nope, there's Barnstable and uh, Jay. Barnstable, okay. yeah. I lie. Uh, I, lie. I don't know about Jay, but I mean, yeah. Bad and old Barney. I call you Barney? Anthony <laughs> Anthony B. Oh, Anthony Barney. He's like, do not call me that. He, I believe he's right about the right age where, yeah, that might be some PTSD to oh, the giant sure. purple right. kaiju. Purple dinosaur. Uh, no, PJ's event should be a lot of fun. I am very excited for it. It is, so far... The only Hero Hooks event I am this pumped for. Uh, anyways, with that, let's go answer some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We have uh, a ton of listener questions. First, we're going to do some double team builds right away. So the simplest one, as you guys know, these past few weeks, we have been choosing a single figure from every Hero Clix set, like main booster set, that we would want to keep. Um, and then... Like, if that set was going to disappear, we'd only choose one. This is the one we would choose. Malcolm asks, with the collector, make, excuse me, a 300 or 400 point team. But you can only use the Heroclix figures that you listed for my last question that you've been answering for the past month. Uh, so my team, so that is basically, collectors are chase. We need to have a, a rare, a common, an uncommon, and a super rare. Um, I don't know why I said it in that order. So my team, 300 points. I did Collector. My common is Dr. Alia Gregor. My uncommon, and also the only, I think the only uncommon I picked. Honestly, I cannot think of any other uncommon I picked besides this one. Uh, my uncommon is Justice League Trinity War Lex Luthor. That's the subterfuge token Ooh, Lex Luthor. He one. is at his terrible 100-point line where he has four uh... clicks of life because <laughs> uh, I just can't fit him in any other way. Um, for my rare, I'm going to use Wrecker Prime, so him and Alia got to hang out. And my super rare is uh, Avengers Empire Captain America, but he's had his 75-point line. Um, 
with this team, I have five points left, so I would probably include, as, as scummy as it may be, I would probably include a single ID card, so that way Lex Luthor can do something before oh, he dies. I forgot um, ID I know. cards. Yeah, dude, legal and legal and silver, and silver. Except this is not silver. This is yeah. golden because I, I I had to make it golden because I had no uncommons in modern slash silver. So, Ugh, yikes! A lot of super rares, a lot of commons, but wow. No now that you said that, I'm gonna delete the object I had on off of my team so I can add yeah. a manifold and Rick Jones ID card. Oh, dude, those are so good. Yeah, those are ten so points good. for. Let's see. Oh no, none of them in silver. Oh. Turns out they weren't made after that set. Weird. Um, no, I'll keep the object, but just keep in mind as I as I go through my uh, my list that uh, it'd be easily to easily swap outable for some object. So the fun thing with collector, in my opinion. So yeah, first thing on the team is collector twenty five points. He does the if you have at least one character of each rarity, uh, modify attack. That is that trait uh, is similar to like the Secret Six kind of or Sinister Six whatever where if you have like exactly six characters you get plus one. Um, it's similar to that where if you lose your common uncommon rare super rare if you lose one of those if you no longer qualify then you lose that modifier. However, yeah. his other trait is at the beginning of the game, each character on your starting force from a different hero click set. As long as the collector is on the map, friendly characters modify damage plus one. So that one checks at the beginning and then does not matter as long as collectors on the map. Anyone on your anyone friendly on your force modifies damage, including people like you mind control or something. So um, figures on my team, I went with the ADW Black Panther. That is so I like this guy on the team for two reasons. One, he's a 50 50 leadership, which is solid. Um He's got Ruler, Wakanda, uh, he's got Plasticity, and Mastermind, so he sticks around for a little while, and then he also gives friendly characters with the Wakanda keyword uh, plus one to their attack value, and that's board-wide. Uh, he's not doing a whole lot offensively, but the Wakanda Warriors that he can generate, let me just double-check real quick. Wakanda Warriors are they? <laughs> They're the good kind. <laughs> uh, I didn't pick a map for this. I should have picked Wakakanda map. Uh, which is Jackanda. it is legal for silver so that's always fun uh the Wakanda warriors so they start off with they've got sidestep they do cost 20 points so or your opponent scores 20 points when they come in and the fun thing about black panther this black panther is so he's got a 50 50 leadership um on the result of a four so leadership succeeds and then uh, so not only does he remove an action token from somebody, but he also gets to generate the Wakanda Warrior. On a four, the character begins on click three, which is their last click. On a five, they begin, begin on click two. And then on a six, they begin on click one, and they don't receive an action token, because otherwise they receive an action token when they come in, which is a little weak compared to, like, uh, Black Heart kind of stuff. But... Uh, the Wakanda Warriors come in with 9 attack on click 1, 2, or 3. 17 defense on click 1 with toughness and sidestep, uh, sidestep on clicks 1 and 2. And then they have a special attack power that is if a friendly character named Black Panther is within 8 squares, they can use precision strike and willpower, which means they can potentially uh, take tokens off of themselves anyhow. Uh, the fun thing about these guys is Black Panther will give them a plus 1 to attack as long as he's on the board. Uh, as long as I still have my spread of rarities, they get another plus one attack from Collector. So they'll be an 11, and then they'll have a plus one damage from Collector uh, because everything from this is from different sets. So uh, that's why I like that guy. He brings in those characters. Uh, next up, in no particular order, is going to be Peace Machine from What If. So he's another super rare Um doubling down i picked a lot of super rares and chases on that malcolm list so he's got seven range uh sidestep flight tk 19 defense tough top dial with uh toughness he's 50 points he's got outwit and then he goes to support later in his dial but he does one thing that's pretty much the only reason you play him it's called suppression field it says trait if a character would take four or more damage it takes three instead which is just 
it's opposing and friendly, so it's just interesting. I really like it. He's got Force Blast, and when he does use Force Blast, he may target opposing characters within three squares in line of fire. I think I used that, like, once. Because he it means he's got, like, a seven-square reach Force Blast, which is, or no, uh, target characters within three. So he doesn't have, it's like a five-square with his sidestep. Um, but it's fun. Plus, he's an outwit, so he just gives everyone a little bit more longevity. Next up is from the Captain America set. I picked the Uncommon Skine. So oh, yeah. So she'll be a 12 attack with her special incapacitate and triple target. Uh, opposing characters can't use super senses or shape change when she uses it, so she's got that going for her. She's also got the Masters of Evil team ability, which means she can drop people's defense by a uh, negative one when she's next to him and then the all important giving shape change to all adjacent characters means those uh, little Wakanda warriors will get a little bit of a boost which is great um, and then she has the assembled bolts and masters but that doesn't matter as much uh, the common figure and this is kind of cheating but the common figure that I went with is from the Fantastic Four set Black Leopard he has improved movement through hindering which is super important nowadays uh, no, he he comes in at 50 points. He's a fairly basic close combat piece, but he's got special trait that is really good. So he's got a special damage power on his top dial that is leadership perplex. When he uses perplex to target himself, modify the chosen value by plus two. Instead, if there's an opposing character within six squares and line of fire that has a higher printed value of that chosen value than Black Leopard's printed value. If they have a higher defense, higher attack, higher speed, higher... Well, no damage, but, um, or range. I could get a plus two to range, I guess. But he's just a good piece for that alone. He's a solid close combat piece. Uh, he's going to have an 11 for four, which is really solid. And then the better part is his trait. The maximum attack, defense, and damage values of opposing characters within six squares and line of fire are equal are each equal to Black Leopard's printed value of that type. So if he can see them and they're within six squares, then they have his printed values. Uh, it doesn't matter if he perplexed or gets the boost from uh, Collector because it's based off of his printed values. So they'll have a 10, 17, 3, and 10 speed. Or when he gets lower down on his dial, they'll have a 16 like defense, 9 attack, stuff like that. Um, Let's see. Oh, I, did I say he's an 11 for 4? He's a 12 for 4 because he has the Wakanda keyword. Ooh. So Black Ooh. Panther gives him... Yeah. And then he can also uh, perplex up you know, his defense because you don't really need to perplex anything else on him. Wait, 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 wait. He has, he has the Wakanda keyword, Simeon? Yeah. Well, do you realize that the Wakanda keyword is the best keyword ever, right? Ah, uh, yes. King of Wakanda. Yes. <laughs> yes. Of course, the first person to comment on most... Not all, but most Wakanda keyworded figures. King of Wakanda says best keyword ever. Yeah. Yep. Best keyword ever. Uh, so that brings me to the last figure on the team uh, for no particular reason. There's no theme going along here from uh, X-Men Xavier School. And this is probably the weakest link in my team. So he's going to definitely stick next to Skine to at least have that shape change. This is the rare Professor X for 50 points. Uh his big thing, he also has leadership perplex. His perplex won't matter because I don't have any other X-Men. Um, oh, and I guess I could just no add X-Men. student ID for free. So I might as well add that three-point student ID. Uh, the real fun thing about Collector also, just like with those Wakanda Warriors, when I call in something off of like an ID card, um, let's say I lose, uh, let's say I lose like my common, my Black Leopard. If I call in a common figure... I get that plus one attack again and that plus one damage. So, the, yeah, the ID character gets all those bonuses as well. But this Professor X is useful for pretty much one thing, and that's mind control. It's within eight squares, don't need line of fire, and it targets all opposing characters. Hit targets can't make attacks during this action, so it's just to move people around. But if you're lucky enough, if your stats are high enough, so he'll be a 12 attack, um potentially higher if I perplex him with like Black Leopard, uh, but he'll be a 12 attack uh, mind controlling everyone within 8 squares, which is huge 
it's a large area through walls, through blocking. Through it's a pretty big area. Thing. Yeah, it's a really disruptive power, and you can move people around pretty well after that. Um, he will need some form of taxi, so Skyn's probably going to be carrying him around. And then the object that I wanted to use, or would use with this, um, would be the Red Wing Bystander from... Or the, the bystander generating object Ooh, from Disney Plus. Yeah, because yeah. that gives me the red ring bystander that will also be a 11 attack, 2 damage with precision strike, hypersonic. And yeah, it's just fun. I like creating the like bystander stuff. There's probably better bystander generators, but I don't know if I put any on the list. I definitely mm. think Collector yeah. has a solid foothold like he could definitely be used in silver though just because between id cards and all the sets that you're pulling from all the bystander generators like just imagine medusa hairs having plus one stats or plus one attack and damage at least pretty i mean that's why i'm like putting wrecker on the team wrecker and ali gregor they got plus two to attack and damage my dude yeah it's real solid well for five nothing else needed minus one defense love it or 11 for 5, it's Thunderball. But yeah. Next team we have to build, uh, Luke 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 asks us to, and we skipped this one a while ago, I feel a little bad. Yeah, uh, we skipped it Build twice. a team, uh, build a team based off what Scotty P here pulled. So, uh, build for 300 silver team if you had to pick a super rare chase or prime to build around. Uh, this is what I ended up building. Sadly, a lot of 300 silver uh, with this keyword ended up being, uh, this is a 300 modern team. Uh, no, actually, never mind. I have one silver figure on it. How could I forget? So I'm building around the U.S. agent. Uh, I've talked about him enough. He's got charge, stealth. He has a full speed charge when he occupies hindering terrain. Uh, it's solid. He also pops off if a friendly character dies. Because once a friendly character does die, he can choose flurry, exploit, super senses, battle fury, or outwit. And then he can keep choosing new ones if friendly people keep on dying. So he's 12 for 4. Uh, he can be at beefier stats if I ever want him to do. Uh, next up, I have four Friends of Humanity. This is a brute theme team. Uh, four Friends of Humanity at five points. We are definitely hoping that we land on either some of the Empower clicks or some of the Sidestep clicks. Very important. One of these dudes lands on Sidestep. Now we'll get to that later. We have Proteus at 20 points. Uh, very simple. The brute one has barrier shape change smoke cloud and then once per turn he can use barriers free or smoke cloud is free but only make two markers so we can pop out uh six he's got five range so we can pop out six squares of blocking if need be if i need to be kept a little safe uh when like moving up and he's got some decent range there uh sky tyrant power gem uh pretty simple i mean it's it's the brute keyword if we're going to try to make a somewhat good silver team uh we know sky tyrant he charges he flurries he quakes he exploits He's got the freaking power gem. He hits hard. Um, what kind of support do I have on this team? Oh, wait. First, let's get to my last figure. Uh, Hulk. I'm using the TMNT, uh, TMT, excuse me, TMT Hulk from the starter set uh, at 50 points. When he moves after resolutions, you can make Quake no cost. He's got that He's got that 10 speed with the Avengers team ability. 11 square, 12 for 4. Quake, so pretty nice. free now. So Korak, is, yeah, Hulk is no free. longer. Oh. It's no longer Silver Dream. Very Sayed, very Sayed. Um, I got 100 points here. Calder, you got 100 points left. What are you going to put on that? I'm like, well, thank you, listener. I am going to put on War of the Realm 063 She-Hulk Muscle Mommy She-Hulk uh, with Megan, Megan Yord, Health of Strength. So she is pretty much my biggest part of the support here. She has free telekinesis, but only to target an adjacent friendly character or generate a heavy object. So I think... Potentially with this team, you might play two of these instead of one at 100. That way you have two TKs. You TK Sky Tyrant, you TK the US Agent. You get them both into some form, well, just really just US Agent into some form of hindering. That way US Agent can charge his full 10 squares. That way Sky Tyrant can then charge his full 11 squares. Um, Yeah, so I think I I put her down here at 100 because she is beefy and awesome at 100. But I think maybe you just play two of her at 50 instead and really utilize that free TK. Uh, it's a super easy 100 points for your opponent to KO. That's the only bad thing about uh, putting her like double at 50, but it's, you're putting a lot into your uh, your ability to uh, alpha here. So I think like first turn, you equip Sky Tyrant, 
you move up Hulk. If they, you know, they go for Hulk, whatever, you've fallen for the bait there. Now you're a little bit closer to me. And then she Hulk, you know, TK's out, US Agent TK's out, Sky Tyrant. Uh, Sky Tyrant's got a 17 square reach. US Agent's got a 16 square reach. Yeah. Um, they might even move up a little bit. We'll see. But, um, yeah, that's that's a team I want to build with U.S. Agent. This is what I ended up making before the show. We got some Friends of Humanity that should also be moved up, so that way they can die. Uh, you'll want to choose a pretty big open map, so that way uh, U.S. Agent can potentially see some people get killed. So that way, before he actually goes out there, uh, he can like have some awesome powers already. Um, doesn't have to be within range, just line of fire. So choose a great big open map with these people. So yeah, that is that is my team. Nice. Well, I went with a... Uh, so this is a variation of a team that I ran back in 2017. Um, I really like this team. I like the bare bones of it. So we haven't really talked super into like what silver, like how to play in silver. We're not really like the competitive podcast or anything. So uh, we haven't talked a ton about it, but I have heard chatter about like how there's new retaliate or not new but there's retaliators returning of course there's like the ai Groot. there's a lot of like really fun ones but i haven't heard a ton of talk about one of my favorite retaliators from that time period and so this team really relies on that which is kind of sad because it's uh, easy to kill a retaliator but anyhow from disney plus the figure that i'm building around is going to be the chase agatha harkness at 100 okay. points so she's eight clicks long She's got a 19 Super Senses top dial. She's got Mystics. Um, probably going to equip her with the good old, uh, what is it, the Stones of Merlin to give her some Invincible. Yeah. Of course, she's not protected at wit, so she also has that. Uh, she can start. Oh, wait, no. I, Man, she starts with the Dark Hold, so maybe I don't. I don't know. You choose uh, to not start with the Dark Hold? Yeah, you can choose. Do you to want not. her to have the Dark Hold? Uh, it's hard because it's good. The dark hold's good. So the dark hold is free. Choose outwit, perplex, or prob, and you can use that power until your next turn, I believe, or until you choose again. I can't remember which, but that's not like super important to the build. The main thing that I want her on the team for is she has a trait that is these are runes, Wanda. So power generate a rune special marker max one in Agatha Harkness's square. If Agatha Harkness is more than three squares from a a rune marker, remove her rune marker. Other characters within three squares of her rune marker can't use powers. So, Ooh. just blanket effect, anyone other than her within three of the rune marker loses all powers. Can't use their powers. I really like this. I think it's a fun enough thing to build around. Um, there's a strategy that used to be viable and isn't really... You don't really see it too much anymore it can still kind of be used but in modern but not really um but it's what's known as a kill box calder you you've probably seen a kill box strategy before have, right? have, yes would, so this was more useful back when people were running like unimind at full and stuff like that so that's where i based this team around was when unimind first dropped and people were playing them at like the 275 or 285 whatever the heck the the larger dial was um, but yeah. it was basically the only thing on the team. So I've got Agatha Harkness who can generate that rune marker. Of course, it's a power action, so she has to get there. She has stealth and mind control as a speed power, and then free if she's in a hindering terrain. You can place her in a square of hindering terrain within four squares in line of fire. So she's got like a super sidestep if she's in hindering. She also has flight. Um, she has... Pensai top dial with ranged combat expert, so she's a 12 for 4 all are on her own, and then the rest of her dial clicks 2 through 8. She has penetrating psychic blast, steel energy, but with close or range attacks, so she has a way to heal up from that. Um, that's what she's there for. She's there to drop the hex marker. She's there to deal 4 pen damage if need be, uh, 7 range, 2 lightning bolts with uh, mind control or psychic blast. Pretty solid. Um, the thing that really brings the team together, the thing that it's not really a trick, but it's it's a fun figure. Uh, this is the what if Ameridroid, the big old Ooh, Captain Ameridroid. My man. I yeah. I love this retaliator. So 
It's not like a busted retaliator, in my opinion. Um, he's got a 16 toughness on his stop click. He's 15 points, 6 range, 1 lightning bolt. But what he does is super unique. It's not something that a lot of characters do. Um, so, of course, it, he's there for the retaliation. So you give him a free action. If no other colossal retaliation power has been activated this turn, and choose an opposing character that attacked a Meridroid or blocked... Or attacked a Meridroid or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. You place a Meridroid such that he can make a close attack, so within three squares, targeting the chosen character, and also target all other characters within two squares of the target. Hit characters are each dealt three damage instead of normal damage. After actions resolve, so this is a good old after actions resolve guy, um, which I don't think he's been fixed. Hasn't like been fixed. Stuff. Let's go. So he's not very quick, but you can no, technically do the... Uh, the walk up free action kind of thing potentially um but anyhow after actions it's resolve like, after so episode, i guess it, it is fixed because place the chosen character and you can't choose a character if you're not retaliating oh, so, i guess that's true yeah, so he doesn't work Rats. like that but uh, after Never actions mind. resolve place the chosen character in any square within six squares and line of fire of a meridroid so that means if you are three squares away like three squares closer to your starting area and you attack this character, you start counting from like the furthest squares on a Meridroid. So you end up actually throwing them, it'd be like five, 11 squares, something like that. If my math is, my quick maths is right. Mm-hmm. Um, you throw them something like 11 squares back Very to your start. And so that's, it's just fun. I used to rock two of these guys. I've only got one on this team. Uh, you could fit two on this team pretty easily. He has close combat expert on that click, so he's actually a 10 attack now. Uh, he's still just doing 3 damage because that's how it's worded. He could potentially punch another Colossal for 4, I guess, but that's hardly going to ever happen. Uh, that's pretty much all he does. Uh, next up on the team is good old double Joker's Wild Green Lantern, 052 Super Rare. Uh, this dude reason... loves his double GL. <laughs> I, I really do. So... Uh, he's got the simpler time trait, which can help himself. So it'd give him a, uh, let's see, if they use the JSA team ability to replace its defense value with Green Lanterns, also modify that character's defense value by plus one against ranged attacks. So if these two Green Lanterns are next to each other and you're shooting at them, they can defend, use ESD, and then suddenly they're at a 20. Um, not terrible. For 35 points, these guys are flyers, so they can taxi stuff. They've got 7 range, solid attack value, 10 for 3. No speed, attack, or damage power. They've just got that ESD and then their special trait, and that is Green Lantern's Light. Once per turn, Green Lantern can use Barrier. He can use it as a free action, but only to place one Barrier Marker. So you can use it, I think, twice, or maybe just once if you use it free. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, when he uses Barrier... He may substitute one barrier marker that he would place with the light wall marker. And the light wall marker is opposing characters adjacent to any of his light wall or barrier markers can't use stealth and modify their defense values by negative one, which is really solid. Um, I'm not sure if that stacks with two of them. I've never actually tried that. But the fun thing with this is if you're not quite set up and you toss your opposing character with a Meridroid into range and line of fire of these Green Lanterns. You can box them in with the, like one of those barriers. You need, well, I mean, four squares of barrier, but power action barrier and box them in. If it's a character that can't fly or if they're within um, if they're within the range of Agatha Harkness's uh, little hex marker, or what is it? Rune marker, then they can't use powers or anything like that. So, these guys Ooh, are there dang, for two yeah. reasons. They're there to, one, box Agatha in so people can't shoot at her from range when she's well, after she creates her hex marker. And then the other reason is to box in opposing characters so that they can't potentially leave. Um, so this is best played on an indoor map. Otherwise, flyers can still just fly over it. Uh, next up on the team... So two of those Green Lanterns. Next up is Captain Carter, the Prime, the Super Air Prime. So she's got an 18 defend. And then, yeah, she's got Enhancement. So if she's next to those two Green Lanterns, they're shooting 10 for 4. And 
doesn't sound like a lot, but if Agatha's taking away somebody's like powers, including defense powers, then 10 for four is suddenly pretty decent. Um, she's got running shot with precision strike and defend top dial. She's got stealth traded as well as starting the game with the Captain Carter shield. So she's defending uh, 18 with a plus one. So she's actually giving a 19 out and then Green Lantern's having uh, ESD, a Meridroid, being a 19 is way better than being a 16. Stuff yeah, like no that. kidding. Um, let's see. She also has the Super Soldier Serum, which just gives her willpower, but that's fine. Uh, and then when establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the soldier or spy keywords gain the shield keyword, which doesn't do a whole lot. But for the record, a Meridroid does have the soldier keyword. So there is that. Uh, it's pretty solid, I guess. <laughs> Gets the shield. Uh, then her special enhancement leadership when she uses it and succeeds once this turn. Once this turn, friendly character that has the shield team ability may use it as free. Well, she's the only one that has the shield team ability on this, but again, some boosted damage and range is pretty solid. Rounding out the team sure. is real simple. So I need attackers that either have range, like the Green Lanterns, or um, people like where their powers don't really matter because they, if they're close to Agatha and her rune marker, they're also not going to have powers. So I need somebody that can be close to her, still still do damage, still be a threat to the opponent, and not like become like a glass cannon sort of thing. Because I don't want to put someone that just suddenly has no reducers or anything like that. So 60 points, it's three mudmen. <laughs> the there, there we go. Turtles. Uh, there it is. 20 points apiece. So these guys do have a decent slew of powers they've got sidestep 10 attack quake 17 super senses three damage shape change they're going to lose all of that because they're going to be next to uh agatha they're also going to lose their plasticity that's traded but what they won't lose is mudman starts the game with two life tokens and gains a life token each time he ko's an opposing character when mudman would be ko'd if he has any life tokens instead remove one protected pulse wave so they won't lose that part they will keep their life tokens so they won't be able to be one-shotted uh, i believe agatha gets does she not get i thought she had um some form of mastermind but maybe not maybe not um but anyhow these guys will essentially they've got plasticity so they can tie people down so alternatively to the green lanterns um i can have these mud men surround an opposing character and then put up like one free square barrier with a green lantern and that's almost just as effective and then i can either have agatha leave her square where her uh rune marker is so that the plasticity is in effect or i can just tie people down because they still need to do a normal breakaway um but yeah 10 for three these little guys are pretty solid agatha is pretty solid being a 12 for four with psychic blast top dial or a 12 attack with double target mind control top dial. Uh, it's not a super effective team. I still have 20 points left over. That's probably going to be for ID cards, where Agatha's just going to start calling stuff in towards the end of, like, after I yank someone over there. Uh, what I originally played this with, instead of Agatha, was Devil Dinosaur with the bystanders. And... The bystanders create almost enough of a threat where your opponent might KO one, and then you can shoot out a Meridroid. You could also add a Meridroid in for the last 20 points. You can put 15 yeah. and like one ID card. There's a lot of options on this team. I don't think it's super competitive, but I think it's enough to one turn some big heavy hitter kind of characters, especially if they... like The biggest problem for this team that I'm looking at right now is... I need somebody to take the first hit so I can retaliate. I, I mean, gotta technically, have that. technically I can, and that's why Devil Dino was such a good play because I could send him out and not have to worry about it. But uh, I guess I could, you know, try and get a Mudman across the map. I could uh, just bury her up with my Green Lanterns and wait for him to come to me. But like, I really like the uh, Meridroid toss mechanic. So yeah, there's room to work on it. 
obviously I don't need three Mudmen. I could drop one Mudman and find like a solid 40 point, like, uh, I don't know, Batrock the Leaper from ADW. Side yeah, I mean, you can still make free something. attacks, I guess, which is nice. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, um, that's that's uh, my uh, Did, Didney Plus team. Didney Plus. Didney Plus. All right, yeah, no, solid pick. Good idea. Uh, next up, we have iZone Bill. We'll try to rattle through these. Uh, iZone Bill said, a friend of mine who is new to clicks, uh, he's thinking about buying a, a brick. So would you recommend for him to buy? That he would get the best combination of fun, casual, and meta goodness. First of all, uh, we had a discussion about this in like the Discord, but like friends new, don't worry about any of the meta stuff. Like if if you really are, like just don't don't worry about it at all. Like no. if you're new, I get I get wanting to have good stuff so you don't get stomped or whatever. Um, well, and you definitely like, don't do need not... like, one of every because there's what like eight, probably like eight meta archetypes out there right now. Yeah. If you tried to collect enough stuff to be able to build multiples of those. Then yeah, that's it's it's adds up really quick. It's not really necessary either. Yeah, like you have to keep you're gonna have to keep getting stuff. So really, this boils down to um, like choosing a generic, like nice, good set that I think has strong pieces and fun stuff. In modern, I think that's Wonder Woman. But if your friend doesn't like DC or doesn't like Wonder Woman, don't buy that. If your friend is a Marvel person, okay. If your friend's a DC fan. I would say Wonder Woman. I think that's a great set uh, for casual stuff. For you know, if he is worried about competitive, sure, whatever. But like even stronger end casual stuff, don't play it crazy optimally. Like Lex Luthor, Zeus, uh, Green Lantern. You know, like stronger end casual things it aren't like competitive. Only, after July, it'd be the only DC option. Only DC set. Yeah, true. Um, but I would still pick it over JLU personally. Yeah, that's um, fair. Uh, as far as like Marvel would go, if they're a fan of Marvel, uh, I think uh, just because it gives you a good slew of things, because I don't know this person, uh, Empire. I think Empire is fun. I think it has not only a really fun set, but it does have some of those, like I said, higher end casual figures that are like, you know, like that super rare Captain America is pretty tough. The All the chases, except for Venom Magneto and Venom Wolverine, I would say are higher end casual uh, maybe not all of them, but I mean, like, sure, you could say like that Thanos is, that Ricky Barnes is. You know, it's there's some strong chases that aren't oppressive. Um, that'll be fun when you're just starting out, so you don't get stomped right away. It's so, like that's all really, really nice um, without having to worry about the meta, which I don't think your friend should. So those those would be my picks. Uh, Empire for Marvel. There's a good mix of stuff. Um, Avengers, Fantastic Four, X Men. You know, it's almost like <laughs> WizKids was like, whoa, it'd be great made a set that's perfect for people that like all of these things and it's like yeah we can finally we can finally make all these things let's put all of them in a set shall we and they did yeah uh, those would be my picks uh anyways to me and go for it yeah uh for modern it has to be wonder woman um i wouldn't i'd never suggest collecting something that's going to rotate out if that person plans on even being like casually competitive like not playing competitive too often but you wouldn't want to suggest jlu and then uh, like three months from now, they have no modern age figures. So obviously Wonder Woman for DC, um, if they're okay with golden age stuff, there's tons of things that I would be able to suggest, but you probably won't be able to yeah. find bricks for. So that's another issue. Uh, I'd never suggest newer players buying bricks to begin with. Uh, a couple loose boosters yeah. here and there is fine, but um, until you get like a real feel for what kind of stuff you want and, get an idea of why certain uh, sets hold value better or why certain sets have more value to them. Like Wonder Woman 80th hits a lot of the ben benchmarks when it comes to what makes a set really worth buying into. Or at least it did at the time. It, I mean, it still does, but uh, really did when they had the case incentive as well. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. As far as a Marvel set, there's... So I know, like, Spider-Man, Venom, and Absolute Carnage, if it was still realistic Easy to, get a to hold buy of. a brick, yeah, and yeah. not for an arm and a leg, I would say that's probably a really solid set as well. Um, of course, it's mostly Spider-Man stuff, but there's some pretty fun pieces in there. Uh, I would skip both of the Fantastic Four sets unless they're a huge Fantastic Four fan. X-Men Rise and Fall 
is a really solid X set. It's probably the best X set in modern because, yeah, I wouldn't suggest buying House of X either. Um, and then, yeah, Empire is for just like a good slew of different Marvel properties. Uh, I wouldn't suggest War of Realms just because it was, I don't know, I feel like it's a lower quality set as far as sculpt and paint goes. Uh, and I would never suggest the newest set just because that's, I mean, Disney Plus would be a good set if they enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of interesting interactions in Disney Plus that you might need to have a few more years behind your belt. I wouldn't say years, but yeah. you might need to have a well, couple games behind, you know, your Heroclix belt before you uh, understand how all the stuff in Disney Plus works. That's pretty fair, I think. Um, Yeah. I mean, to, to kind of expand on your point, Simeon, that's what I did when I started playing. I just went to, like, Cool Stuff Inc., whatever, bought singles, and I just bought, like, every Captain America they had. You know, I just I just bought my favorite characters. I looked up on HC Realms, you know, like, who are some of, like, Captain America's more, like, notable allies. So I wanted to pick up, like, an Agent 13, a Diamondback, uh, whatever, U.S. Agent, Bucky, all that stuff. You know, like, I just, like, went through and, and like, honestly – that's exactly what I'm doing with, like, Marvel Champions. Like, I just got into this card game. If someone would have said, oh, you should buy into the latest set, it's the latest set for Marvel Champions is a Spider-Man set. And I'd be like, well, no, I, I hate Spider-Man. I'm not going to buy into this Sinister Foes set and buy my Spider-Gwen or and my Miles Morales packs. I, I would hate that. So what I'm doing is I'm looking back through other decks and sets and I'm figuring out which ones have cards I like. I'm like, oh, that's the only way I can get Agent Coulson, so I'm going to buy that one. You know, that's the only way I can get U.S. Agent or uh, Winter Soldier, so I'm going to buy that one. So I think that would be, like, the best way to really go about it is just buy, pick and choose figures that you want. Maybe give him an idea of, like, what's modern so we can get the most bang for his buck out of them for, like, longer, you know? Or just play more Golden Age with him, Golden Age games with him and be like, you know, buy whatever, man. I, yeah, buying a brick, I'm not huge on. I like the idea of you saying, Simeon, buy a few boosters. That gives you the little that little taste to enjoy the gambling aspect of Hero Clicks. Be like, yeah. ooh, yeah, I ran a booster. <laughs> ooh. You know, but yeah. I don't know about buying a brick right away. Like, I mean, I didn't buy a brick. We just talked about this uh, the last podcast. I didn't buy a brick until two years into playing this game. You know? No. And, I mean, it's it's been a while since we've done it, but uh, in our um, new clicks on the block series for, like, newer players... Uh, we do expand on like, you know, if you go to a new venue, you're going to have most likely a lot of veteran players that will, you know, you'll have like the Lucas Tom Van Hollands who just buy like cases of stuff and then Disgusting have amounts of tons heroes. of extra like commons and uncommons. I know I'm not sure how every venue is. Obviously, there's a lot of differences out there, but I know at my personal venue, uh, like for Wonder Woman, anybody that wanted any common and uncommon and most of the rares from that set i had more than enough duplicates to like fulfill whatever they wanted um i could I'm sometimes trying to like force them to take more no you want one maxi zeus you get seven that's how it works oh, now sorry you get Here seven you maxi zeuses but yeah going to a local venue uh not necessarily like begging for anything i mean you don't have to like ask for handouts but usually and in my experience, so it may differ. Usually in my venue, uh, if someone opens like a booster and it's got, you know, a rare and then they've already bought a bunch of the set, they'll be like, well, like that pack didn't have anything for me and they'll just pass it off to someone else. So that's pretty cool. That's one of the nice things about this community is people are pretty uh, lenient with how they, they give are. away stuff in my experience. Yeah. yeah. Or just I know, uh, I just, borrowing you... figures. If you make a team, on, like you build something, and you're like, I don't have these three figures. Is there anyone that can let me borrow them for the night? I know the kids in Rainbow do that quite often. Where they'll yeah. borrow stuff for uh, whatever the build may be. And that's also a great way where you don't need to own one of everything that you ever want to play. Like You can borrow it or, I mean, at worst case scenario, proxy it, I guess. That kind of sucks. Yeah, if your uh, a venue allows you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how many games I play at Rainbow where someone's like, here are my figures. I don't have any of their cards. I got HC Realms pulled up. And I'm like, sure, sounds good. You know, that's like not an issue anymore. 
<laughs> like since the dials are on the back of the card or something, yeah, sure, you go for it. Proxy whatever you want. Like put a dice on the on the game board and say like, oh yeah, this is a this is a collector. I'm like, oh okay, yeah, sure. Let me look at this. Like pull it up on HC Realms. Let's see what he does. Sadly, you could play a game like that with everybody knowing dials. But anyways, hope we answered that question, Bill. And I hope your friend gets more and more into the game of Hero Clicks. Luke, Luke Luke asks, why are people so upset? Don't they know? Oh, this is about the PAC. Don't you know you don't have to buy the miniatures game to get the most recent PAC? WizKids makes it available online in good quality PDF format. Have these upset old boys never heard of copy and print center? Um, so I think people just like getting mad about, I mean, in Hero Clicks, I think Simeon can agree. Yeah. People just like to complain and get mad about stuff. I didn't buy any of these last few um, whatever ones. And I've just been Googling the every time I play like a game. Yeah, I, I did not yeah, buy the buy Empire one. And I know yeah, the PAC I didn't buy Empire. So, um, like, I, I just look it up on WizKids' website if I'm playing an online yeah. game. I have it handy it's if I'm like super easy. I yeah. actually prefer, well, for the PAC, I prefer a physical one. Uh, I do. For the core rule book, I have the PDF on my phone. And then anytime a question comes up, I just hit like search on there. And I just type in like a keyword. So if someone's talking about like action phase, then I'll type in like action phase and it'll probably nice. pull me like right to where I want to go. Um, yeah. It's how I answer most rules questions. Cause obviously I do not like memorize the rules, but it's super easy to look stuff up on there. It's super quick. So having it on your phone is just good practice in anyhow. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm assuming the upsetness came from, one, the rules being like tweaked multiple times, which I think they were just cleaning up wording and fixing what yeah. their intent was. So it actually matched what they intended it to be. And then also like the price jump for Disney Plus and stuff where, yeah, like you said, um, you can just print it. If you have like download the free PDF that WizKids gives us, they don't have to provide those, but it, I mean, it makes sense that they do but you can just take that free PDF and print it for next to nothing. Or if you want the figures and maps and all the other things that come in the set, then you can buy that. It's almost like it comes with more than just rules. Almost as if. Uh, <laughs> anyways, next question we have is from the Uncanny Cause. Now that we've seen all the items in Disney+, Plus, what items do y'all both think are the best and worst? What would be good for meta? What would be good for some casual fun? Uh, I think... My opinion, I think the best item is Captain Carter's shield. Uh, the defend and yeah. plus one. Being Everything able to add so defend good. to anything or a plus one if they already have defend for, what is it, five points? Five very points. solid. Yeah. Yeah, very it's solid. really good. Um, just for hey, you the know, fun of it. Uh, sadly, the Captain America shields and US Agent shield, not as fun, flavorful. I think the serum is cool. I think the serum can be good for some casual fun for giving willpower out to people. That's pretty f casual fun, I think. Super Soldier Serum. Um, I think the Spider-Man, uh, the Cloak of Levitation, I think that can be both for meta and casual, honestly. Like, I think you can try to, like, min-max it, be like, whoa, and then I think it's also, like, cool. I gave this one guy sidestep, you know, and plasticity uh, mm. for some casual fun. So I think that's, like, a good object that can be played either way. Just trying to find characters with a 20 defense. Um... I think White Queen is the only single base. F I mean, according to well, I shouldn't oh, say single base. The no. only standard character. My, my favorite one is he's tiny size, uh, but it's Ant Man from Chaos War. Seventy five points though. I'm just trying he's got to twenty think, defense. Think of ways that you could give somebody with like a twenty defense uh, the shield to defend it. Uh, oh sure, there's yeah, plenty of nineteens yeah. out there. I mean, uh, yeah. Dad thing from Earth. Um, or Earth. Bad thing about. 19 defenses a lot of them already have defend yeah which i mean that works yeah, there's again, a suicide storm shield. there's the yeah. ones. um i'll but say a lot too if you want to be a risky business with a lot too you can i think the u.s agent and captain america shield will they'll definitely be used with the characters that can have it already equipped i don't think oh, yeah. they'll be used with people that already have esd or combat reflexes I don't think I care about the plus one as much as I care about the plus two. So yeah, if I see. play those, it'll probably be somebody on like, you know, somebody that's stealthy. I'll throw the U S agent shield on them and get yeah. combat reflexes. 
or, or yeah. someone that has like traded ESD, give them the US agent shield. Now they've got traded convert reflect, you know, or vice yeah. versa, yeah, yeah. you know. That's yeah. In my opinion, that's better than getting just like the one additional plus defense. Extra plus one to either one. Yeah. Um super soldier serums probably the one I'll play the least, but it is really interesting on so sad. cosmic energy figures because now they have like a 50-50 rollout. Is it worth five points and building around? I mean, not necessarily building around, but I'll say in modern, yeah, because there's not a ton of stuff after rotation that's going to be five points. to. So there will be plenty of teams that end at like 290 or 295. And so, you know, slap the super soldier serum on, say that 10 times fast, uh, slap the super soldier serum on, super soldier you know, serum. like Ultron Infinity for a bad example, but an example that works. And then you've Real. got a 50-50 rollout. You know, is that better than the Herald dial? No, but it's 20 points cheaper. So, you know, Cloak of Levitation is probably the worst object that they've ever made. Um, Obviously. Flight is garbage. Plasticity is not useful. Nobody uses sidestep. People hate having sidestep on the dial. Uh, that's why they didn't give everybody, anyone in this set sidestep. Yeah, so bad. That's that's easily like the pass upable one, you know. If yeah. you pull that Spider Man, just I send think... them to Dial H, and we'll film ourselves yeah. smashing them or something. Smashing so. them, yeah. And I, I think if you like that object, I think you're an idiot. Yeah, you're, you're a smooth you're brain. Probably terrible at hero clicks. Um, probably really bad at hero clicks. Probably like some sort of flightless bird, like a penguin or something. If you need yeah. flight, something. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Dog We Trust James asks the 28th of this month will be a year since Wonder Woman 80 came out. From the last four sets, including Wonder Woman, not just uh, which pieces, not just meta, should see more play or see less play. Basically, short version, you're saying what's the most underrated piece from a set? What's the most overrated piece from the last couple sets that have come out? Tesseract's the worst object, by the way. I'll probably never play that. Got what a is? zero use the Tesseract. Oh, yeah, Tesseract yeah. is actually the worst. Ironically, it's garbage. If I was going to use one, it'd be the the whatever the Spider Man dimensional watch thing, because that at least has like some more utility than just prob after oh, I've taken a true. bad power action. Um, yeah. Last four sets, inclu including Wonder Woman, which pieces, not just meta, should see more play. Uh, Ferdinand from Wonder Woman 80th. Oh, you scumbag. Play. That's what I said from oh, Wonder okay. Woman. I also said Ferdinand. Yeah, oh, he's all right. so he's solid. Good. I don't yeah, know no, how. I mean, I, I get it. Most of the time, people are going to double tap, triple tap, whatever, do whatever they need to to KO figures, so there's not a ton of healing happening, at least not in this kind of way. But the power, choose a friendly character, roll a D6, heal up to half the result. Um, it's better than support. You don't have to roll the attack roll, and yeah. it doesn't matter if you're already adjacent to somebody. On top of that, he's a solid figure with a 50-50 rollout on his last two clicks for 30 points. He's just yeah. real fun, real solid. Um, let's see, another figure. Uh, who's your overrated one? You said you're underrated. What's your overrated Ooh. one? It's hard to say Honestly, overrated Honestly, because agree. they're consistent. They're just good. Um so from I'm gonna Wonder give Felix Woman, Faust. Yeah, it's Wonder Woman. There's dumbbags in my Flash, venue. I like play him Felix, uh, Sky Tyrant, but those are all like consistently winning. They're consistently yeah, good pieces. Um, I'll also, I'll say another figure I'm surprised doesn't do more, and maybe this is just because we haven't gotten more DC. Maybe she'll have a, like another shot next year or later in this year. But the title character Wonder Woman. I've gotten her to the negative five and I've seen other people get her to the negative five plot points and she is hard to deal with. If you build well, she's really hard to deal with when she hits that. Uh, she gets cosmic energy, uh, cannot be KO'd, just can't be dealt damage. Uh, and then at the beginning of your turn, if there's no other friendly characters with the Amazon keyword on the map, you lose the game. So she gets like a 12 for four with 12 speed charge really solid overrated i have to say sky tyrant just because i hate okay. him so much that's fair that's fair i mean he's he's not overrated he's probably correctly rated but man do i just yeah. hate that that figure exists in modern yeah set rise and fall uh overrated um blackheart i think that's pretty easy underrated i'm going dakin uh, i okay. think people should play more dakin i like dakin a lot i mean he's the only one i like from that set so all right yeah 
I'll agree with Blackheart. On paper, he seems a lot easier to deal with, or a lot harder to deal with. Um, in reality, he's actually manageable, like more manageable than other things. So, yeah, I'll agree that he's probably overrated, but he's still solid enough that he's being played quite a bit. Um, underrated? Oh, man, I want to say something like Diamond Patch, because Diamond Patch just... Sure. But he's he has a really solid like swap he can go to brotherhood or x-men or hellfire he's got like all those key words so instead i'll say i don't see enough multiple man being played um, mm, okay. multiple man for the simple fact that he's five clicks long and he has a trait where he takes a max of two damage from attacks for 40 points um yeah i just i'm surprised that he's not utilized more I get he doesn't bring a ton of stuff to the table other than making like his click nine dupes, but that alone should be, you know, if you have more than one multiple man at 40 points and one of them takes, you know, two damage, goes to click three, takes another two damage, goes to click five. Um, now you have two empowers on the board from one character. So I, yeah, I'm just surprised that that's not being used more. And maybe it is on X Men swap and I just haven't been paying attention. So that'll be my pick for the underutilized uh nice. eternal movies anything uh anything no good from no that one? no it's no. underutilized no, in we, eternal movies. Uh, all of it oh <laughs> all of it i guess except for sprite is i don't even think anyone's playing that oh the no 35 actually no i did hear someone say that they there they played it but it might have been sealed i don't know but yeah the 35 some point sprite piece. stands in the house yeah <laughs> So, Empire? Uh, Empire, I said, obviously, I think Magneto is overrated. I mean, yeah. he's properly rated. Overused. I don't want to say overrated. I'll he say, gets the most use out of that set. I'll say is overused. I do not think a double TK. Hey. Gene Gray wasn't worth it. He's, he's slightly better. He works on a lot of keywords. But, like, Gene Gray was not worth less than that. Gene Gray, though. I mean, right? If she was or, 50, he's 35. Or 30 like, points more. However, or 30 cut, I mean, more. sure, sure, because, fair enough. You know, you could call her in on an ID card, and she still oh, never right. hit that you're $200 right. mark. Um, something underutilized, I'll say, even though I think he's probably utilized the about the right amount, or he's uh, whatever, you know, he's he's about the right, is uh, either Mr. Fantastic at 30 points, which I haven't seen on a lot of teams for whatever reason, or Ultron Pym. Matt Reed's okay. been playing him a lot, and... Yes. Not even for the like the uh, the old uh, mission point thing, just the simple fact that you can generate drones and when an opposing character is part of a theme team, which a lot of teams are, and they use probability control, you deal that character one unavoidable damage. So Ultron Pym can kill like an opposing Faust just yeah. by letting him uh, prob stuff. That is nice. That is nice. I man, I don't know who my underrated is. I think playing Captain America not for swap, purely playing him just to be like big beefy dial and full hundred points. I think under underused is playing Cap at the full hundred. Um, that's me. That's me being biased. Yeah, being play him with Ferdinand. A, and you can heal him. Anyway, yeah, play him with Ferdinand. All right, last one. War of the Realms. I think underrated. Uh, Thor's mighty chariot. And I'm just really? saying that because I'm like, oh, is anyone? I mean, is anyone playing Thor's Mighty Chariot? Is that not underrated? You're yeah. playing it for something that uh, was going for way too much before way the, too much the legacy card yeah. was shown. Because this was like a thing where Scott showed off all the figures that were going to have legacy cards, and people panicked. Right and for they something did. that, yeah, I think people were paying like two hundred dollars for it, or you know, at least and to say. Say another legacy card where if I owned the figure, I definitely would be trying to play it. Thor and Loki. Oh, I think yeah. Thor and Loki like make sense and like work better. Thor That's and Loki awesome. are really good. I I like how they've gotten around uh, the duo attack by letting you pick. You know, this is Thor's dial. This is Loki's dial. You let them pick. You know, running shot, psychic blast, uh, ESD, or Thor's yeah. is charge, quake, combat reflexes. Um, it's yeah, it's a solid figure. I don't know if I'm able to build with it at 250, but it's got it a lot, the right a lot. flavor and stuff. Uh, and they're very mobile, 
high amount of range. I will say overrated. Really quickly, Rocket Raccoon. I I do. I just think really? he's overrated, man. I yeah. I, I guess there are a few people that think he's decent. People are not. Some people are like losing their minds over him, and I'm just like, no, come on. I just don't think. I just don't think he's that like him. good. Yeah. I, I don't if think you want to like bad. write in the show and call me an idiot for saying I don't think he's good, <laughs> then by all means you have the right to do that. But I it will not change my mind. I don't think he's that good. If it wasn't Line of Fire and it was just opposing characters within four, I definitely say that it's like solid. Yeah. Um, if it was not easily outranged, I mean I guess he can like right. move up or something. But uh, I'll say overrated for me is going to be the Prime Destroyer. Um, okay. The fact that it's that the only reason it's at all playable is that it can be brought in for free from your sideline. Uh, I think it should be if either character is equipped after resolutions, give a destroyer a secret token and roll a D six. So I think it should be easier to gain tokens so that the destroyer actually ends up, you know, in like a normal game by turn like three or four or something, maybe even like turn five. I think if destroyer yeah. ended up on like click eight, click nine um something like that it would actually give your opponent a chance to ko it uh and i think like i don't know if it's optional to roll to see if he comes in but yeah i would like to see them have like uh five five of like the tokens or whatever the seeker tokens and then roll a six on the d6 and that he just comes in and like goes to click 11 and it's ko'd and you score 100 points i'd like to see that um is he good for the zero point cost, yes, of course. Everything for zero yeah. points is pretty solid, usually. Uh, he takes up a prime slot and a sideline slot. I don't think that's a bad deal for being z- like zero point filler that's either a 12 for 5 or 11 for 4 penetrating damage and 10 range. I think he's just way too good. And I think at some point, like WizKids will do some sort of like sideline active thing like anti like a sheriff strange of just random sideline pieces but we lost the majority of the ones or we will lose the majority of the ones that are left come rotation uh yeah. that'll be my pick for that underrated piece in the set man it's hard uh i really i think if avengers if we get like a really solid avengers team or a couple like really solid avenger uh sets then there might be a spot for Spider-Man and um, Black Widow who pass out shape or super senses and stealth. I think that might be a thing. Black Widow giving out stealth, just blanket all Avengers have stealth combined with that tarot card that we've seen that gives uh, True, takes away yeah. targeting and then gives everyone that has stealth and hindering free move six. I think that could actually make this Black Widow worth playing on a team. Um, Granted, again, because that other cap exists, you can just play swap with it. And then is it going to rotate? Is Captain America rotating? Uh, Yes, Captain America Avengers, yes. So we'll we'll lose Steve Rogers, so there's not going to be any um, keyword cheating for Avengers. But, yeah, that'll be my underrated one. I don't like the piece that much but it's a huge utility to just have yeah. stealth on everyone. Black Widow, she is she is very solid. I've made her once in Sealed so far and then built with her once, and, I mean, just giving everybody stealth is dope. Uh, next up, Eroy Jack says, I have a question. With us turning to silver-aged competitive, uh, if you could build around one older figure, who would it be? For me, it would be Venompool. He thinks he's a great little monster waiting to mess up teams. Uh... Yeah, a couple of Silver Age hated picks. Venompool. Probably. Yeah. Oh, you don't like Venompool at all? No, I like. I hated playing they against do. it. I should oh yeah. Say. Oh yeah. It's rough. It is. He is very oppressive. He's tough, man. Um, I'm Deadpool in the X Force. Swarm. I when Swarm was modern, I really wanted to build like a Sinister Syndicate like competitive team with Swarm. I don't know if it's possible, but man, I liked Swarm a I... lot. I'll say I think he's gotten better. Let's see. Let me check him out real quick. Uh, yeah, so he didn't have Indom. So he has True. He's 120 he points. He doesn't take pushing damage. 
and he has double rollout. I think he's okay for sure. Yeah. Um, unless it was doubles, then he uh, didn't take more than one from attacks. Yeah. Yep. I think yeah. now that he doesn't take pushing damage and can uh, pass out more bees than before, I think he's probably fine. Okay. Bees What's don't your count pick? against your action to total. Um, oh, yeah. Bees are great. I'm really excited to build with Anarchy again. That's Oh, yeah. That's probably one of the first things I thought of when I saw the Silver Age list was like, yeah, Anarchy's going to come back. Is he going to be good? For 75 points, he does not bring a whole lot more than the at the beginning of the game trait. Um, but I'm working on like doing something to keep action tokens off him. This might be a figure that I actually equip with um, the the little willpower, the super soldier serum. Oh, super, Cause, super soldier serum. Yeah, he's, he's not worth putting Galactus on. I think Galactus combined with this guy, where the board's getting smaller and the board's already hectic because it's got bombs everywhere. Yeah, and I like that. This guy having willpower, maybe like a skinny Steve can't do it. No, can't take leadership off of him. I don't know. Somebody that can do like Prezra card, maybe, uh, so yeah. that Anarchy can put as many bombs as possible. Maybe, I don't know. Something like that. I'd like to really pump out the bombs. I think there's, you know, the bombs kill Flash the super rare flash they kill uh retaliators they kill any like one click thing they also yeah, just true are really hard to position so if you're if you're running like uh what's the green lantern the little squirrel chip i think <laughs> if you're running chip then he might uh no he's more than three clicks long but it'll definitely damage him so there's a lot of characters that are good but don't have reducers and anarchy wipes the floor with a lot of them. I mean, it's a 50-50, so it's not guaranteed. Uh, it'll never be real competitive because you can't do anything to boost that unless you play the tarot card where you can re-roll the uh, D6 roll, except I don't think it's a character rolling it, so yeah. I won't even get into that. But yeah, that No, right on, dude. Uh, next question. Murdoch is Brad, new Patreon this past uh, month. Uh, Murdoch is Brad. Going through old episodes, Simeon, uh, recently, so recently in this old episode, drilled a hole in his leg. He's a little checkup on you, Simeon. How's the healing process? Is it back to normal? Is Hang there on, an indent? Let me, let me pull my pant leg up. Oh, I can still... Uh, it's not an indentation. Now it's like a discoloration. It's just like a it's like a little purple circle. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I, I Next, didn't uh... drill a hole into my leg. I self-tapped a hole. That's right. It's it's essentially the same uh, thing because, yeah, yeah. self-tappers are made for drilling through metal. But, yeah. Uh, next question here. Adam Mack, why don't really old figures have value anymore? I think part of it is there's no format for them. Then there's also power creep involved. So, like, what we're going to see with Silver what we're seeing with legacy cards the way figures were back then it's not the same they are now i know believe it or not shocker yeah. uh, i think yeah the reason old figures don't have as much value is because number one power creep number two there's no format for them right official if, yeah if the collectability wasn't heavy there when they first released they're probably yep. definitely not so most of your commons uncommons from any set um are pretty much 100 percent worthless Oh, um, Simeon, yeah. they're worth at least five cents. <laughs> That's true. You can go to the buy list on Cool Stuff Inc. and uh, get paid for those things. But no, um, I'd say they're like people. Once they get older, they're just not worth anything. Uh, okay, next <laughs> question. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, no, my uh, gosh. <laughs> some things hold their value really well. I'll say, you know, most chases will hold their value to an extent um, there will always be things like like the Age of Apocalypse Magneto probably yes. won't ever drop in price. Things that it won't be made again. But yeah, yeah. a lot of the value is locked Then in again, that just enough. comes to collectability. Like, yes. Right. All the zombie chases and stuff are worth money. Why? Collectability and because they were sought after that hard when they were modern, when they came out. That Magneto was like a $150-something dollar piece when he came out. You know, like that's why he's holding his value yeah. more so than and the it's others. Something they probably won't ever make again. Yeah, um, that true. Most well. of like most chases 
are versions of characters they'll probably never make again. Like they'll probably ma- never oh. make a dark metal uh, chase set again, which is sad because I feel like they could have done better than what we got. But yeah, that's really? probably why um, some stuff I'll say like Trinity of sin, where the chases were the sins. That was a comic book event that like, you know, you never know if comic book event is going to be, something that is like beloved by fans and it just didn't really go over like amazing. It's not super memorable. So those chases oh, other yeah. than their utility. And again, there's no, there's no golden age format or official format, I should uh, say. So, well, we've been on about an hour here. We still have a lot of questions. So let's try to, uh, do some nice quick responses here. Warburg Jedi is going to hit us with two questions. What is the oldest piece? Would you ever part with it? Uh, my oldest piece is probably a Captain America or something from Infinity Challenge, and no, I will not part with it. So you mean oldest piece, like the first piece I got, or Ooh, oldest piece or I like owned? oldest? Okay, first piece I got was in a booster of Captain. No, the first piece I got was quite literally that Secret Invasion pack, and no, I would not part with the Punisher from that, but I would probably part with the Iron Fist and the Iron Man from that pack. Hmm. I mean, your oldest piece that you got, will you get rid of it? Let's see. What is the oldest piece that I have? Uh, so the first piece I ever got, I probably already got rid of. It was from a Flash gravity feed, and it was Max Mercury. And I opened it, and I was like, huh, who is this? And then I looked him up, and I was like, okay, he's uh, like, oh, he's, he's a like loser. Disco Flash. <laughs> It's like, although not nearly as fast as the Flash, and I was like, ah, cool. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't like my flavor of piece. Um, oldest yeah. piece I own is the Universe Thanos. Uh, not the Infinity Challenge Ooh. one that they made a legacy Ooh. for, but the one that's the exact same dial, point cost, everything. Exact same sculpt, exact same flight bay. Everything's the same except the collector ah, number. I mean, this is so sad. And will I get rid of that? Yeah, if they make a legacy card for that version, that's the exact same. Man, they should have just, on the legacy card, it should have been like Infinity Challenge 141 slash Universe 117. Pour one out for all the homies that got the Universe Thanos. Yeah. Uh, Next up, Warburg says, out of your generics, which generic do you have the most of and why? I think I know Simeon's answer. Mine is, if we count champions and normal skeletons, then I own the most skeletons. Uh, yeah, mine's from Undead. Easily Sentinels right now. Sentinels. I do yeah. have like 40 listed for sale right now. Um, if we're not counting those, let's see. What is. Oh, I probably own. I, I know I own a ton of Wonder Woman stuff. Um, man, I used to have a ton of Doombots and then they hit like $8. So I sold all of those. Uh, if we're not counting things like Fate from Justice League or like Loki's, sure. then I'll say the next, oh, it'd be, it'd be the aim, the aim red, white, and blue. Um, oh, nice. Uh, that would be the next amount that I own the most of. I own a ton sure. of the whites. You count all three of them. Oh, whites. Interesting. Yeah. I own like two blue and I think like five red, ah, but then the I own blue are expensive. 14 whites. Dang dude. Okay. There's a joke I can make there. I'm not going to. Uh, Kamiyamiya Waves <laughs> Days says, what is your most hated piece in gold and silver and modern, and how would you destroy it? Uh, my most hated in, I guess we'll start in modern, is swap pieces. Uh, specifically, I guess, X-Men swap. So I think, I guess, that boils it down to Professor X. Um, how would I destroy it? I did. I think this one was a bag of ice i think that's how i destroyed that booster i can't remember maybe it was the sword one uh simeon what are your modern they'll just go back and forth between oh, silver most hated modern and gold. modern is yeah. i want to say molecule man Oof, but yeah. if, it, if we didn't have molecule man people would just run more double marvella but even then that's that would be better than molecule man so yeah i would stick prefer with molecule, molecule man, man. yeah um, i don't like any piece where i have a hard time building without it and i have a really hard time not building with molecule man because i'm like he's just so so good at what he does and it's a very simple thing but being able to block your entire team off or most of your team off 
And I know you can do it with like Proteus and Marvella and like all the other barrier type stuff. But I think as far as like a one piece goes, Molecule Man's done the worst amount of damage to my competitive building life in modern. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, dude, lots of pain. Uh, in silver, my most hated is Unimind. How would I destroy it? Well, I only ever lost to it once. Uh, so the trick to, and I've played against it several times, one with a Kite Man Joker Batmobile team and still popped Uni. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. The the trick to beating Unimind is just make attacks. Just make yeah. a bunch of attacks and pour it on him, man. I mean, um, yeah, obviously yeah. there's, you can equip him with stuff and you can be... He can be really gross when played in like certain formats. Um, yeah. I will say the the double nerf that he received probably means that I'm not super worried about him anymore. Um, I definitely built specifically to beat Unimind for a back in like the day. Uh, I built yes, specifically I to I be able to too. beat that. Um, let's see. I think my current silver build. And I'd have to actually practice it more, which I don't really care to do. But my current silver build does one-shot Unimind. It's like nice. a, Based. depending on what dial he's on, but it's like a, a Medusa hair hitting him through his stop click for like seven. It's pretty okay. But um, do I hate anything more than that? I mean, not with the rules changes. I'll say if it wasn't Unimind, it would have been giganto namor because i hated that plus like 13 monster team that got put on those just super oh, yeah. over just completely oppressive like roc maps that were then printed on paper i think it was hedge maze man that was bad that was a bad time bad. when or bad yeah when if you weren't running like a stupid high theme and even if you were running a stupid high te like theme you could just win because you lost map roll and there was just no way you were yeah. doing anything about it uh yeah um and then for golden age you know long time listeners in the show they know my most hated figure in golden age it's mary freaking marvel from world's finest <laughs> i hate that broad so much she's a pos it's stander uh and yes she counts as a meta piece because someone took her to a states tournament i played at beat me with her and i hate it uh yeah so mary marvel is my answer for golden. How do you destroy it? Again, with a hammer. You just crush your opponent's figures. Man. I don't know if there's a figure that I hate. Uh, you know what? It's it not Nighthawk Prime. I could say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hated plain that's technically golden, it's not silver. I mean it just is right. golden. Um, no, yeah. Adjacent to silver. But yeah, the Friendly characters can't be targeted by mind control. Opposing characters' combat values can't be increased. Like, all of that. Hated all of that. Uh, next up, Adam Mack again. We just ran a tournament where if you win initiative, you either get to pick map and side or get to go first. What do people think of that? And should WizKids implement that into the game? So that's kind of neat, where it's like, instead of picking map and then you don't get to choose side, and then the opponent goes first... Or, and then you also get to go first, so it basically just lets your opponent, who goes second, uh, pick the side of the map, which can often, with a lot of maps that look identical, kind of not matter. Uh, I think it's a neat idea. Uh, I would like to see maybe other people try it out. It seems sounds like a neat idea. I haven't tried it out, but yeah. it seems cool. I I'd like to see what the over under was for people, like what people chose. Because oh, that too. Going yeah. first is solid, but if they put you on a map, that's just terrible for Fox. a team yeah so i mean obviously you're probably going to pick something where you're good on any map because that's yeah. what you normally do but yeah i think in most of my cases i'd rather be on the map that i wanted and get the side because that and seems like a I pretty want. solid deal yeah um especially certain maps being able to pick map and then side means you can really like shoehorn your opponent into a bad area yeah um I think that would be my go-to, but yeah, I really like that. I think that should be like a, uh, we should we should give that a name. Adam, I guess Adam created that format. You should give it a name so you can be like, yeah, this tournament's gonna be silver uh, map slash effect. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Something. 
Uh, coming out ways for days again. If horror clicks came back, what figures would we get? I mean, I don't. No one's gonna know what figures we would get. I would like. I would personally like classic movies and stuff. But based off what horror clicks gave us originally, we'd probably get a bunch of weird uh, zombie generics. That's like zombie teenager, zombie uh, construction worker, uh, zombie whatever. And then we could probably get some generic. Uh, heroes for how horror clicks worked, right? So there would be there was like Doc and like Priest and like Teen Boy with flashlight, like the generic hero people, I think. And we got like Cthulhu, Alien vs. Predator, Freddy and Jason, just yeah. Jason. I don't I remember. Was, I think it was like when Freddy vs. Jason movie was Freddy out. versus Jason. So I would Obviously, I'd prefer we get more just movie stuff, you know, Evil Dead, as per the last podcast. Ugh, um, gross. But yeah, you scumbag. <laughs> How dare you? So when they said horror clicks, so some people refer to the undead set as horror clicks. Um, I wasn't sure if that's what they meant or if they actually meant horror clicks. Uh, yeah, what figures would we get? I, I've i said it before, but I'd really like if WizKids is doing like a... Uh, an IP free set like there's <laughs> IP freely um, if it was an IP free set like they didn't have to pay another company for access to like the the internet intellectual property um, I think it'd be really cool to go with versions of real life people so I okay. said before when we were talking about uh, like undead to getting like Teddy Roosevelt on like a oh, skeleton yeah. horse or something yes. would be really funny. Yes. Um, but yeah, like do, I mean, not necessarily all presidents, but just famous people that obviously are uh, usually passed Zombie on. Elvis Presley. I remember when that was like a thing where they yeah. like thought Elvis Presley was a zombie. Yes, that'd be awesome. Do like, like the weekly inquiry. You could do like Bat Boy. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> things like that. Elvis still alive in Mexico. Um, yeah. But yeah, versions of characters or uh, real life people that are usually, I would say, I don't know. I don't know how you do it in a tasteful way. I will say the chances of WizKids doing an Elvis Presley in any form or fashion is probably out the window as long as they're oh, doing yeah. stuff at Graceland. Yes, yes uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they probably uh, don't want uh, to offend anybody by making a beloved Elvis. person uh, yeah. a zombie. But like oh Bubba Hotep would be cool if we could yeah, get let's uh, go. what was it JFK and yeah dude and yeah, Elvis he's yeah Jack Kennedy <laughs> and then Elvis yeah that'd be great. Uh, Disco Text Andy says what keywords will Scooby Doo get besides animal? He's got to get detective, right? He has to. Definitely, I don't know what else yeah. besides animal or detective though. Speedster. He's pretty fast. Yeah. See him like spin those in, wheels. In, insert the little sound effects they do when they start to run and their legs turn into like sonic legs and they take off. Um, then he asked, what would a good all WWE Silver Age team be? Well, Simeon, there is no such thing as an all WWE team. Got to put his yeah. boy Prez Ricard on there. Prez Ricard's uh, too good not to have. I feel WWE. like John Cena's got to be there at least to try to play him out. Like, the new cool. one for sure. I think uh, Taker. You know, I think there's just like w, certain WWE staples. Undertaker. Think, so Shawn Michaels has Warrior, a 17 Shawn Michael, with, uh, combat reflexes. reflexes. Yeah, he already has perplex, so he can already be a 20. Do you think it's worth putting the uh, U.S. Agent Shield on him so he can use his mm -hmm. perplex for like speed or something? Or do you think that five points is spent some better somewhere else? Because I thought about this yeah. earlier. I think it's bet, spent better somewhere else because I don't think it. No, it doesn't. When really you finally get enough. up into the fray, right? Like you're not that worried about defense. You just clocked someone for however oh, much. Sure. I mean, in Shawn Michaels' case, yeah, that's true. Yeah, in Shawn Michaels' case, yeah. Um, I've said it a hundred times, and I'll keep saying it. Oscar is like the best forty points oh, yeah. in WWE. Yeah, uh, if you can find like one of my favorite combos, and I don't know how to do this, I don't think it's possible in WWE only at all. But if you can find a way to lock your opponent's damage, like Peace Machine or Witch Queen, if you can find your a way to lock your opponent's damage at three, 
so that they can't one shot Oscar. She becomes a nightmare on her last click. She is so good on her last click, especially if she can KO some stuff along the way. But yeah, that would be my answer. Uh, you definitely have to run at least one Oscar. Eddie is too solid to not run. Oh yeah, WWE. Eddie. Yeah, that uh, prob with it's not just prob. It's uh, as far as WWE characters go. He has one of like the smallest windows where you can actually target him from range or without wit. Uh, he has, he's one of the fewest or the cheapest ones with a stop click. And then he also heals off that stop click the first time. And then he's got submission and outwit on those like clicks. He's so good. Triple flurry, uh, get some in power in there. Probably play like triple H on some sort of team. So you can give everyone in power. Uh, next up. We have Luke Luke. He says, if each team archetype was a pizza, which pizzas would they be? And why is Thanos extra greasy and super cheesy? Uh, Because he's Thanos and he's disgusting. And people that people that play him have the worst taste in pizza. And that's just cheese pizza. Thanos would Um, eat the pizza that's been under the heat lamp all day. Yeah, there it is. Stale cheese. Uh, Dude, I think casual is just like pepperoni pizza. If you're playing a generic little casual team, you're just a pepperoni pizza. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Solid. Always can do. I think an Alpha Strike team is a some type of spicy pizza somehow. I don't know what it's that gotta means. It's got to be like a New York, like really thin, where you can eat it on the go because you're, you're in too much of a hurry to enjoy your food. You just got, want the end product. Oh, sure. And Calzone for uh, for Alpha Strike. Don't want to play the game. I just want to <laughs> eat it. Yeah. I'm going to eat Calzone. Uh Okay, I think an all meat pizza is like don't die tech. It's like this is gonna take. Oh no, deep dish pizzas don't die tech because like, you're not gonna get it through. Yeah, you're not gonna get through it. Yeah, Chicago, right? Chicago style deep dish. Uh, yeah, um, this is gonna be tough to get through. Yeah, I'd say bystander bystander generator is stuffed crust meat lovers. I've decided. <laughs> is that is, accurate? What is swap is swap, uh, swap like is supreme. Pineapple? Oh, okay, supreme. No, right? Okay. Supreme. Sure. I mean, yeah, it's got a little bit yeah. of everything. A little bit of everything. Uh, I'll say, let's see, high defense pizza would be stuffed crust. Yes. It's got the, it's got the cheese defense. hidden, protected underneath crust. Right. <laughs> cheese is protected. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's funny. What's uh, what's a one-man army? Oh, man. Um, so is a one-man army pizza? those personal pan pizza? <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, it's, yeah, it's one of those, those ones you get at a gas station the where it's the four disc. slices. Yeah, yeah a little disc, where it's yeah. like you eat it and you're just like, the only thing you can think is like, man, I wish there was more to this. Wish there was more, yeah. Wish I had more actions. Uh, I'm I'm okay with all of those. Uh, Disco Tech Andy goes on to say, will the next Moon Knight figure based on Disney Plus get a special power calling in Marvel's Layla on her scooter once per game? No, I doubt it. Um, I don't think we'll ever get a Disney Plus Moon Knight. If we, I think if this set does well, we might get a second Disney Plus set if, if everything really goes well. To. I, I honestly think was... don't think I would buy into the next Disney Plus set as much as this one, though, just based off of Hawkeye. Yeah. And what I've seen of Moon Knight so far. I think we'd need more shows to, like, relief. Really, like, we'd need yeah. another... Uh, what if season and definitely need another one at least season. one or two more shows yeah. um now if it if disney plus rolled into mcu so we got like multiverse of madness we got thor oh, 4 yes, stuff like yes. that then for sure um Take i think all of Aries my money said he'd be okay if they did like a disney plus set every year that it'd like be, oh yeah um, absolutely i'm not quite there i think I think if there's enough content each year, I'd be down for it. Um, I would like to see, like, if it was every other year and they could include stuff that they had, like, definitive ideas of what this, like, character did. And then, like, a few spoiler-esque figures where maybe they didn't know exactly what it did kind of thing. I'd be cool with that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. special no, power absolutely. calling in Marvel's Layla on her Layla. Student. Yeah. Um It'd be... No, that's that's Stephen Grant's power. That's not Moon Knight's power. That's what Stephen Grant gets. Yeah. Good old Mark Spector. So, yeah, in the comics, there was the like the billionaire, like Bruce Wayne personality. There was Mark Spector, who was Moon Knight and like the dominant personality. That was like who the guy actually was, the one that was like a mercenary in Egypt. And then I can't remember the other one's name, but he was like a taxi driver. 
And his yeah, whole thing was, was like, driver, I yeah. collect intel from people that I give rides to, which yeah. they totally could have done with like Uber. They definitely could have just made Steven like an Uber driver. Great. I don't so know. like he has like multiple personalities and this is like a little side tangent here. But then he also like Captain America, Wolverine, and Spider-Man, like, talk to him somehow. He hears, like, their voices, right? Or something weird in, like that. Yeah, in comics, that's... Um, I can't remember who did that. If it was Warren Ellis that did that run. Okay. But, yeah. Or, no, that was... That was ben, my favorite was version of him. Bendis. Yeah. Bendis with the good runs. Bendis only makes win- winners, dude. Bendis yeah. bangers, man. So, They're all that good. one... I think he's fighting Count Nefaria, but he doesn't know it yet. He's in, like, San Francisco, so it's, like... It's not New York. It's not like, you know, whatever. He's in like San Francisco <laughs> fighting Count Nefaria. Oh. And he actually thinks for a while that Captain America, Spider-Man, and Wolverine are fighting with him. But it's yeah. just him by himself. Yeah. Giving himself his own advice. Yeah. Yeah, homeboy's got Fruit Loops all mashed up in there. Um, Cody asks, what kind of dial would you have liked Battlestar to have if he wasn't passed over for Disney Plus? So... Obviously, he doesn't need any of the traits for when he dies because John has all of those already. So I think Battlestar should have been a... He would have been a pretty simple charge piece. I think he would have been on the same level of Batrock the Leaper. I think he would have had either some type of outwit or some way to remove tokens from friendly characters or something perplex for friendlies. Yeah. Because he really was like Battlestar's like rock to stand on when like he was like a, just a good... Fr- or, not Battlestars, but he was John Walker's like rock to stand on. Battlestar was like truly like any everything you would like want in like a good friend. Like he was like helping him feel more grounded. He like you could talk to him. And he was also like a solid fighter and you know, a soldier. Uh I forget. Like, but they were in like the same uh I don't even want to say it. Squad. Ah, that might even be the wrong unit. word. I don't want I, unit. Yeah, sorry. I in know. yeah, I don't want to offend anybody. I just don't know the right words. I almost said platoon, and I'm like that. No, um, but anyways, but yeah, like I think a pretty solid like soldier. He didn't use a gun or anything. He he was like punching people, so it would be like a charge, pretty basic charge dial. I think, I think. Like an empower, um, an empower. Oh yeah, it works within like four squares or Definitely. something. Ooh, um, that'd be solid. But yeah, he definitely had the ability get, like, to like a trait. close attack, but was more of like yeah. a support kind of thing at the same. It time. would like a. Maybe a trait where it's like if him and a character with the real name John Walker or named John Walker Captain America are adjacent, modify their defense values plus one. That'd be kind of cool. Old mini support right there. Uh, Disco Tex Andy goes on to ask again in terms of pizza, what is the bigger offense, pineapple or mac and cheese? Uh, I've never had mac and cheese pizza. I will say Ooh. someone told me about mac and cheese grilled cheese and said it just doesn't work. So maybe mac and cheese on pizza, like with the two different carbs, noodle and bread, maybe that just doesn't work. But I think at first glance, I'm just going to say pineapple because it is disgusting. Yeah. You are a monster so, if you like pineapple on pizza. I have a very simple philosophy when it comes to this kind of stuff. I don't mix my sultries with my sweets. I like them both separately. Um, there's very few occasions, and I'm not talking like, oh, like sprinkle some salt on like pineapple or on watermelon. That's a completely different thing than eating like a meat-based sauce, cheese, and like, I mean, if you put ham, then you've got like three different types of salt and then this like really sharp citrus sweet, and I do not like that. I do not like pineapple on pizza. I'm not going to say that you can't enjoy that. Obviously, I think it's fine for people to do whatever they want. Uh, I will say I've had a good macaroni and cheese pizza. There was, like, oh. you know, noodles on a pizza. Yeah. Um, it is hard to pull off because I've also had two or three that were bad. But the one that was good was it was a mac and cheese. It was like buffalo chicken cream cheese with um, like spiral noodles on top. And so the noodles were also like cream cheese and whatever the cheese on top was, like mozzarella. Um, but that was fine. Uh, most of the time, it's not great. But in my opinion, pineapple is way worse. Macaroni yeah. and cheese, at worst, doesn't add anything to the pizza than like a weird texture. Ooh. Whereas doesn't pineapple always adds like sharp citrus flavor. Yeah. Hope Possum fourth. If resources were brought back, what would you like to see and how would you like them to work in today's game? Personally, um, 
you sort of have resources. Um, I wish like tarot cards were straight up a resource. I wish you had to pay for them. And then I'm like, cool, that's a neat resource. Or I think Galactus is really just kind of how resources used to be. He's got a dial that gives powers, but he's equipment instead. Don't don't let them fool you. Galactus is no equipment. He is a resource. He kind of do be a resource though. Like he works way too similarly to how resources work. Yeah. Um, so I think they He's are honest. already sort of back, but they're just not called resources anymore, yeah. basically. Galactus is like one step away from what Supreme Intelligence did. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, he is quite literally like bringing basically the almost board, the exact same. Yeah, bringing the board. Yeah. Basically the exact same thing as Supreme Intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just don't want to call it a resource because they're done with resources, I think. Um, if they were brought back, what would I like to see? It's hard because we've got swap mechanics that work like the ID card swap. And I thought that was a really cool part of those resources. Not necessarily like having access to the IDs, yeah. but the ability to like swap cool. at the beginning of the game was cool. And obviously it was it was good enough that people played it back then. So when they came out with swap, like that was a pretty clear indication that was going to be pretty good as well. Um, something like the Punisher van and like the Blackbird where it's a physical cool. thing on your team that is like you you can attack it and not like in the same way lanterns the lantern batteries worked but if it's something that i can attack to get rid of or i can attack to you know disrupt it or something i like that so if it's the punisher van and it's spitting out weapons and i've got like all these uh, little thugs or whatever on my team that are picking up weapons and doing different stuff i'm fine with it because i can then just you know, divert my effort to destroy the van. Uh, if it is right. the Blackbird coming in and real boying like a Cyclops turn one to pilot it, and then, you know, yada, yada, that whole great period of time that we were in after like 2018, um, I still like that more than what Lantern Batteries were, what Supreme Intelligence was, all that kind of stuff. I do not like points that are... I, I don't really like game elements that are off the map, but I really don't like when points are off the map. When I can pay for points and then my opponent has zero chance of scoring them unless they beat my whole team. Yeah. Next up, Bill, his own Bill, is going to ask, how much would Elon Musk have to pay to buy Dial H? Asking for a friend. Ah. Oh. Man, a lot. He it would be a lot of money. He doesn't have enough money. I don't think I. He really might not have enough money. You really tell can't you what, take this away from me. If, I do like it. If he wants to go under the moniker of Dial H, me and Calder will run Twitter and we'll just swap. You know, he can pay four billion for Twitter and then we'll just we'll just trade. He can have yeah. this media empire. We'll have yep. that one. It's fine. Oh, that one. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that trade. I'll tell you what. I'm blocking all HeroClix chatter from Twitter as soon as I get it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it needs to be off there. Heck, I'm blocking a lot of chatter from Twitter. Twitter is the cringiest <laughs> like social media. I just, it is so bad. I just throw the giant switch. <laughs> it just shuts down, and people are like, "Shuts it down." You just destroyed this media empire. Like, yes. And then I have to go back all, to my nine to five. But I'm like, all for the better. Yeah. Uh, uh, uncanny cause. If either of you won worlds, what figure would you make and why? And then he says, they tell you that you can't make Captain America because there are too many. I'm going to say also you can't make Wolverine since he specific specified my favorite guy. Okay. Uh, are we going realistic? Know. Yeah, are let's go going... realistic world's pick. Realistic oh, world's pick. Off the top of my head. Uh, so obviously realistic means no image, no Dark Horse comics, no yeah, yeah, Marvel or Super these, Saiyans, basically. none of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, off the top of my head, because we were just talking about Moon Knight, I think a Moon Knight with a similar but cooler pose than Rick Jones from Avengers Assemble, where he has that Wolverine cap and like, what was it? Uh, Spider-Man. Uh, Rick yes. Jones had Blazing Skull yeah. and Namor, though. Um, Ooh, cool. Yeah, yeah, if if there was like a Moon Knight where it had those incorporated into the sculpt, or just the cover art where he's got, you know, he's got like the shield, the Wolverine claw, and then like a Spider-Man mask, that was also like a really cool thing. Yeah. That would make a really cool convention piece, or just a piece in a set. Um, yeah. I'll try and think of a different one, though, because I... So no, my, no one feels my like I just first thought, if I can't use Captain America, it would be Yellow Lantern Guy Gardner. I really liked that. He stole Sinestro's ring, like beat up Sinestro when Guy Gardner didn't have a ring. Took Sinestro's ring. Uh, 
and then in that run, this is like Guy Gardner's like single book, like he's the title character of the book. Uh, run. It was like he beat up Lobo, had like to deal with Lobo a bunch. He there's even like a point in time where he had no ring, and so he just was like Punisher. He just bought a bunch of guns. Uh, basically, I would do yeah, I'd be the Yellow Lantern guy fairly confidently for like a version of a character I'd like to see made. Uh, Iron Duck. Howard the Duck mm. in his made up Iron Man armor would oh, be really okay. cool. I thought yeah. you were talking about or, like a or, contest or of the big one mix or the contest of champions one. Actually, yeah. that would be better. I would prefer the Iron Howard the Duck from Contest of Champions. Oh no, Civil Warrior. Also, I mean, I guess maybe you could up there as Captain America. Yeah, he's cool. Rats. Um, but yeah, all the ch- Contest of Champions, even Guillotine, Man. any of those like just like made the OC characters, uh, I guess that's original character character, uh, the OCs for Contest of Champions are all solid. I like all of them. I like, really, yeah, I really yeah, dig Contest of Champions designs. Uh, the game itself I don't really care for anymore, but um, <laughs> I talked about it a couple weeks ago, how I downloaded it and then deleted it like within like 30 minutes because i was like oh yeah this is what it's like this is why i didn't have it on my phone for years um yeah i'll say if whiz kids could somehow partner up with contest the champions i think it'd be super simple whiz kids champions gravity so good and then so good each pack has like a promo code where it gets you like in game, like the crystals or whatever, or you just unlock a specific character that is WizKid and contest. Like it's a crossover character. I would or whatever. love that so much. I oh think it, it brings a ton of people to the game. And as far as contest of champions goes, um, it doesn't really do anything for them, but yeah, but it, I mean, it does bring some of like their figures to life, which I think would be, I think that's cool whenever you, You've yeah. created something, and then you get like a sculpt of it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Is that we're good? Okay. Uh, Mandalore McCall asks, "What fictional characters from books would you like to see get made into clicks? Not dial design, just a general character pick." Laura Ingalls Wilder. You want to talk about don't die tech? <laughs> Nothing can kill that farm girl. They went through plagues and storms and fires, and they moved from state to state in the Midwest, and they survived. Or Ingalls Wilder, Don't Die Tech Meta 2023. Make it happen. That's yeah. all I have to say on that subject. Say Anne of Green Gables. Oh, uh, yes. A, you know, it's a, let's see, orphan cared for by two elderly siblings. <laughs> Um, no, if we're, Radiant I thought if we were picking like Gable. ye oldie time books, um, yeah. character from a book, I'd have to go with like Dresden files. So like Harry Dresden. So he's essentially just John Constantine, okay. um, takes him a little bit more prep time. He's not as powerful as John, but he's, he's a psych or not psychic. He's a magician detective sorcerer dude. Sure. Um, it's a cool book series, but Ah man, I'm trying to think of like the most recent book that I finished. What if what if I would have just it. like unironically said, "What's her face from like Fault in Our Stars?" Like, man, we should really make that one girl. She should be in Hero Clicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the teen novels. Um, yeah, we could. I, you know, if we did Bella like a classic and Edward and uh, Bella Jacob. And Edward. And... <laughs> oh no. We get a she. She has to. She can move free. Move one square before she's given any action. Because every time she talks, she goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would take a a Scrooge from Christmas Carol. That'd be cool. Go with Jacob okay. Marley. You know, is, is that from a book? Did they make it's a that book? A book Christmas, out of it? Christmas Carol is a book. What do you mean? Wait, what? Oh, I thought. You're... <laughs> Carl's you, said, you Dickens. said Scrooge, and I immediately thought of Scrooge duck. McDuck. There it is. I for knew he meant the duck. For some Look reason, my brain instantly, oh. I was like, Calder's never read Dickens. He has to be talking about Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about uh, Ebenezer. Um, the OG gosh. Scrooge. Dude, can sure. we get Conniger? Uh, I think that would be a Moore. good horror clicks. Uh, the Ghosts of Christmas Past, yeah. Future and Present. Terrifying. Like, I've yeah. seen, I've seen, uh, what do you call it? Like original art 
done for those where they make them look oh, like yeah. really creepy. And uh, yeah, you could definitely right. sculpt some cool stuff around that. Uh, I said it off chance there a little bit ago, but uh, Louis L'Amour, can we get just generic cowboy man set? Because every main character in a Louis L'Amour book is the exact same lone wanderer cowboy man <laughs> finds a, a girl who husband left her and got to take care of her kids. And he he stops some of the outlaws or some bad businessmen or some garbage going around the town. Yeah, get me some generic cowboys from Louis L'Amour books, please. And thank you. You can't convince me they're not all basically the same plot because they are all basically the same plot. Uh, if I um, if I read we'll a Dave Ike book, we could get a reptilian set. True. True. That's that's mostly just hidden racism, David Ike yeah. books. Hey, so Grapes of Wrath set not so hidden racism. <laughs> not so hidden. straight up racism. Yeah. A uh, a to kill a mockingbird set straight hey, up. Got Atticus uh, with eight range, dude. Atticus attack. with the outwit eight range. It'd be like precision strike, one damage, but still. Yes, yes, dude. Uh, objection. Uh, this is a false accusation. My client is is not guilty. Yes, let's go. Oh my gosh, Atticus. No, you want it? I can't think of a better one than Atticus. That's so good. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, last question, James asks. It's the first day of Tritium, Monday Thursday. Which apostle do you think would have enjoyed Heroclix? Which would have the best dial? I think James would have liked Heroclix the most, and I think Simon Peter would have had the best dial. That Alpha Strike just chopping off people's ears. Just <laughs> totally unprovoked. Not unprovoked totally, but still. Just, yeah, Alpha Strike, Simon Peter. Please and thank you. He'll have... No, James and John would have the fish symbol. John the Baptist would have fish symbol for sure, though. Maybe. I don't know. Those mm -hmm. are my picks. Yeah. But who would have traitor mechanic? Who who would have the traitor mechanic? Who, <laughs> who could it be? You could have like a <clears throat> stop click similar to Gene Gray's where they explode when they hit it. Yeah. They they instantly um <laughs> That's some like let deep, the opposing team lore. use the capture ability on your highest point friendly character <laughs> when that click is revealed. Jeez. Uh I yeah. was thinking about the part in the desert after that where <laughs> oh. it quite literally explodes. Um but yeah, that's some that's some deep Bible lore stuff. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah. That's oh, that's the enough. best I can do when it comes to apostles. Good job. Up some monkey. He did it. Uh, hey, that's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long one. It's been a good one. Uh, hopefully, we have some more news next week and stuff. Stay tuned, though, to the Dialect Shirkles YouTube channel. Like I said, shout out. If you want to watch the pitch meeting videos, definitely check those out. There's all sorts of good stuff. If you haven't looked through our Dial H skits or extreme gameplay tabs on our YouTube channel, definitely check those out. Uh, if you want to ask us all these crazy questions like what we got asked today, you can do so by joining our Discord. And the best way to do that is, and the only way to do that, is to join our Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month, gets you access to the Discord. And playing Bad Samaritan almost every week. This week's tricky with Easter and everything, so probably no Bad Sam this week. But if you want to join the Discord and get entries into the monthly giveaway, we gave away like a Chase Jason Wingard, a uh, Namor Power Gem, do all sorts of cool stuff last week, a booster of uh, War of the Realms. Uh, we're going to give you away a ton of stuff this next uh, giveaway. I got the Disney Plus Marvel uh, Funko subscription box, um, which I only wanted one thing out of it. So I'll be giving away the Scarlet Witch Funko Pop, the I'm Saving Myself for Thor shirt, and the Jimmy Woo and Darcy Lewis sticker. Uh, I'll be giving that away as well as a bunch of other Heroclix stuff for May. So you can get cool t-shirts and get cool posters. And if you like the last segment, the flurry of questions last week with uh, Josh and Xavier, uh, that is a tier that you can join on the podcast. So uh, that's all I got to say. Stay tuned to the YouTube. There also might have a little uh, little travel vlog for the tournament next week. Simi and I might try to get some fun footage for that. So yeah, oh, stay tuned, sure. guys. We bring that's all I got to say. Um, oh, yeah, you got even to. Most people in the community probably won't know what it is uh oh, no, yeah that's fine still bring yeah. it um i will say if you're a newer player and this for some reason is like your first episode that you're listening to us uh for any reason um what calder what do you think the best 
so we started implementing the Wonder Woman rules as the articles came out for Thursday Throwdown. Uh, oh, I yeah. During the indie set, we weren't taking pushing damage. I was thinking around episode 20 of Thursday Throwdown, which I, re- if I remember rightly, was, uh, I think it was like around Incredible Hulk kind of era. Um, Maybe it was past that. It might have been past I that. I feel like we would have been playing a little bit longer than that. But uh, what, yeah. what episode do you think would be a good jumping off point? Because I had a discussion with a newer player that uh, there's not a ton of great like rules or how-to stuff for the new rules, but the way we play is casual enough that you can probably like learn some stuff from our Thursday throwdown. So I'd say jumping in around like episode 20 of Thursday throwdown or just to be safe, if, I mean, you could jump in episode 30. Doesn't really matter. Find a set that looks fun um, yeah. somewhere at, like in that range. And yeah, there's plenty of, you know, we take our turns fairly slow. I think we say what we're doing all the time because we have yeah. to because it's online. Uh, but I yeah. One of the, one of my favorite ones was, oh man, see, I'm, I'm forgetting which games I liked and then which like thumbnails I just thought were great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, dude. I will say, I think, uh, mm. let's see. Um, Joker's Wild versus Superior Foes was episode 30. That was a good one. That That's would be a good. good. One. Um, you get to see how Anarchy works. You get to see how Devil Dino works. Uh, Avengers Infinity versus X Men Xavier School was pretty solid. I think that okay. one had some fun stuff in it. Yeah. yeah we were both playing Gameplay bad title wise. characters. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Maybe also um, up there for fun thumbnail. Yeah, definitely fun. Yeah, thumbnail. definitely check out the Thursday Throwdown series if you are new to Hero Clicks. Want to see some casual gameplay? Try to like explain it our best. Yeah. We also have, of course, the um, this isn't gameplay related so much, but if you are new to the game, our new clicks on the block episodes uh, are good. I think we have like two episodes of those um, that just kind of teaches you how to find if people are playing Hero Clicks in your area, how to start collecting, how to just start yeah. playing in it was more general. more of the teach a man really to fish approach rather than the yes. give you the fish. So we don't answer, like, well, what does Precision Strike do? We didn't do any of that, but we no. gave you the tools to find that kind of stuff. Right. Sure. And if you want the tools to find that kind of stuff, well, they're in the they're in the starter set, which is now pre-orderable. They're also PDFs. But if you want to make a good segue... <laughs> uh, you know, you should go to coolstuffinc.com where good segues are always new and fresh. Uh, but no, Disney Plus is up on coolstuffinc.com. You can start pre ordering cases, bricks, Dyson Token, starter, uh, maybe even individual boosters. I haven't actually looked, but they probably have individual boosters ready for pre order as well. And uh, yeah, you should check them out, coolstuffinc.com, where we've got. All the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. So check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, how people they think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. At the trails. Oh, and the play at home kit. Yeah. Forget. Hey, trails.